Greetings again, ASLers. We are commencing the game of Bailey's Bridge, Scenario S66, at the Matanacao River in Guadalcanal in 1942. The units are set up. I did adjust my Japanese setup, and hopefully that won't be too much of a problem. But I had some adjustments to go, some technical issues, and it's like, let's go with this setup. I mean, you can set it up a number of ways, but each one is based upon what you think you need to do as the Japanese. I don't think you want to set up too far forward as we scroll over to the game. I don't think you want to set up too far forward, but you still can. I mean, you could legit set up units in N3 and N4. Um, they'd probably get advanced upon in close combat under concealment, so you'd have a negative. But if you wanted to set up two units right there to surprise him, you know what, just for shits and giggles, considering those are legal setup areas, I'm just going to cram all my units except for one unit and the mortars. Keeping the same instance about the mortars blasting stuff as they come across. This is just a stop gap to slow units, maybe jump some guys in close combat, ambush them, kill them in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And then maybe he won't have enough points strictly to go off. The American setup is exactly the same. The American plan is exactly the same to go down to exploit these areas over here. So the order of movement is important for the Americans in terms of when these Japanese units will be exposed. So how to do this is very tricky. The half squads are obviously gonna go first because that's what they're designed to do. So that's not an issue. All right, so let's do just what we planned and move our half squads first. There's no prep fire phase. There's no rally phase. There's no bullshit phase. These guys are hidden. These guys are concealed. Let me get the concealment here. They're going to lose most of their concealment anyway. And um, I'm just going to put a couple of concealment markers over there. Delete these. And then uh, go for that. So we're going to take our half squad in our movement phase. Again, the plan is to go straight down, go a couple hexes down the path, see if anybody's there. That's what his purpose is for. And, um, and let's go with it. So we're going to move one here. And so technically he is concealed. And so with that, what's going to happen is this unit one of the two four four sevens is going to fire so we're going to put this concealment marker we're just going to throw it over here for now not right now so he's going to come exposed so he'll flip him around so right now he only sees one unit because he moved and he's going to fire he loses his concealment and he's going to say i'm going to fire at your location at eight firepower plus zero because he's not assault moving and that is a plus one let me zoom in a little bit that is going to be a plus one jungle because it's a light jungle because it's on the exterior and again this makes the difference in the particular rule is this considered an interior hex interior hex or exterior well these are not jungle hexes so therefore Per rule, explicitly as it's written, these are not interior jungle hexes. Um, because these are treated as, as uh, no terrain, essentially open ground on the outside. Uh, you could argue that. It could make a difference. Uh, it's not fully explained. So we're going to go with this. So let me go find my dice real quick. All right, so we're going to open up at a eight even shot from the unit there rolling two dice i roll a five no cowering obviously because it's an odd number five even is a two morale check on the two three eight two three eight will roll his two morale check and rolls a six and he is pinned so let's go get a pin counter real quick all right we popped a couple counters out and um placed them accordingly all right so now what we see what the americans see now is that one unit blocking the road that might be presumed that he's blocking the road so we're going to send the other 238 
And the other 238 is simply going to do the same thing. He's going to go two. He is concealed. But this unit will come and he will fire. And he will fire after the American loses concealment. He will fire eight even again on the enemy unit, leaving four residual. Now, the difference between these two, two locations here is that this 238 only expended one movement factor in this location. This 238 expended two movement factors. So I could possibly subsequent first fire on that particular unit. So he'll end up loot, dropping four unless he cowers. All right, so here is an eight even shot on the 238. He rolls another five, another two morale check. Let's see if this guy rolls another six and bits pinned. And he rolls an eight and breaks. So he'll just flip. Leave a DM for him. Uh, let me go find the DM. All right, so what problem do you see right now with the American unit in this location in N4? This broken unit in N4 DM'd. Oh, this unit's first fired. I'll get a first fire marker for him. And he'll, he flips around. So what problem do we see with the American unit right here? He's going to be f dead for failure to route. Nothing that the American's going to do. Well, for, even if this unit were to... Uh, he can't be broken unless he goes up there and gets shot 15 times. Impossible. Well, theoretically, again... I tried to select them all, but it didn't happen. That's all the American sees right there. So he could try to penetrate. I wouldn't want to go through 04 because if any unit breaks in 04, they're going to die as well. So the American has, immediately has a quandary of where do I want to go? Do I want to pursue that unit? Because the 238 has gone. He can route to N3, but what does he see there? A 447. Probably not going to be gone by the end of the turn. All right. It could possibly be broken, but highly unlikely since it has to break three times. So with that, it behooves the American not to move any other units. Not to move any other units in this location in N4. Because they will die. The same principle applies to N3. If he moves anybody into N3, he might consider the subsequent first fire pretty weak. But if he breaks an N3, he will be eliminated by the same virtue as the unit right next to him will be eliminated. So that immediately changes the America's plan completely. So now they have to go around the edge from where they are here. And that could be a problem. It actually might expose all the Japanese units, but I don't see that the Americans are going to be moving forward in any of these locations. You could move into N2 because you could route to N1 because you know no enemy is going to be in O2 because that's outside the setup parameters for the Japanese. So, um, O2 would be a safe hex to go into. P2 would be a safe hex to go into because all these all the hexes on the top part of the board are routable hexes, and technically you could even route forward this way. If you were to break in P2, you could just route this way. Maybe not your best choice, but that's an option you have. So, nobody goes into N3, N3 is off limits, N4 is off limits, so we have to change the American plan. Um, let's go ahead and move the 8 minus 1, and these stacks and units because they're, 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 their plan is not going to change anyway, and they are concealed. So he goes two, four, five, six, and that's all the farther he's going. And then he's going to be marked. I'm just going to turn him sideways, and he'll be marked moved. So these, these other units as well. Probably don't move. want to move in a group. Uh, we might want to get a flank shot on this unit, so we'll go uh, two, four, and that location there. I'm going to reduce these guys a little bit. And what we're going to do here is we're going to um, 
go ahead and expose the other unit here, knowing that the Americans are probably not going to move in this location here. Because I wouldn't. I mean, that's just a death zone, especially with all those shit. Uh, this unit's going to come up as well. This unit will subsequent first fire. So this unit will first fire. All right. So that's going to give us a 12 firepower plus one because he's now he's going to be in um now he's going to be in dense jungle so it's a 12 firepower plus one for the japanese japanese rolls another five got all the got are fives seven is a one morale check on the 12 chart for the american american rolls a nine he will break and that will leave six residual That's great. And so uh, one's final fired, the other one's first fired. Uh, six residual is six plus one. Should be good enough for those units to take a morale check. So, um, mm. yeah, we're going to go two and four. We're going to take a six morale check or six uh, firepower attack there. And say, Stu, that's a stupid attack. It's a six, morale, six attack. Yeah, it's six plus one. Uh, six plus one will yield a pin to ass check most of the time. So the Japanese. And I roll 10. No effect on the 558. Five, this unit could final protective fire. And this unit could subsequent first fire as well. Um, that would be four, eight... I think we're good to go right there. He's going to have eight fire. He's going to have hmm, six firepower firing back at me. And that's going to be a plus two. He's going to be a plus one, eight up one. Uh, after all, seven for a pin. I don't want to be pinned in the jungle. Uh, we're not going to subsequent first fire. Well, he's not going to final fire. How about that? Um, this unit will not uh, fire as well. So the leader seeing this unit broken here, he's obviously got to come on the map. He'll simply go two, four. You could you could uh, leave the leader last because all these units have to probably shift. All these units probably have to shift. Three, four, advance. This unit will go one. Two, three. This unit will go one, two, three. Remember, you've got stacking limits that you have to abide by. You've got the nine minus two and a whole shitload of units right here. So what we're going to do with the nine minus two is going to bring him, five, five, eight, him, and a five, five, eight. And we're going to go one, two, and then th three in this location. I'll move this over just a bit. And this is why you need to shrink the counters down a little bit or make the map a little bigger. So one, two, three, these guys have moved. It's, I think it's quite simple enough to keep track of the guys have moved. Uh, and then we will subsequent for Spire here. Uh, we will, well, first of all, he gets the four even shot. Japanese roll an eight, which is no effect. Um, then we will... We'll take another four even shot. These guys can get shredded though. That's going to be a six twelve. That's going to be a twelve even. Yeah, we're just going to take one shot. Four even. Uh, six on the four shot is a normal morale check. Nine minus one leader. Oh shit! He rolled a twelve. That's not good. Uh, two eights. We've got an eight, which is a pin. And a five, which is an okay uh, casual reduction for the leader or wound check for the leader. And he's a one, so he's wounded. I didn't think I'd be 
we'll be needing the wound counter. Oddly enough. So we're gonna we're gonna put the wound on him. So one guy's broken. One guy one guy's pinned, one guy's okay. And then the uh leader lost task check. The pin guy doesn't need to take one, the other guy does at a level two. He rolls a four, he's fine. Ah, which gives us some firepower, so that's pretty good. So um let's get the wound on this leader. Alright, we did a snail game over here. So um we've got the um the stack here, broken units, pinned units, and the unaffected units. So we have two other units to move on. Um, those guys are final fired. He's simply going to go one, two, uh, three, four. And these shoot over here. Uh, no, he's not going to go four. He's going to go three here. Just in case one of these units breaks for some stupid reason. You never know. Uh, we're just going to leave him off. And this unit's going to go one, two, three, and he'll just go four stacked on top of this unit. So that's going to be it for the American movement phase. The um, residuals will come off. So the subsequent press fire phase, excuse me, the defensive fire phase for the Japanese. Let's swap positions. This is what they're facing. Units behind them already, uh, going to the end. Again, we're looking at two, four, six, eight victory points and a leader. So that's enough to win. So we're gonna have to probably move some of these units back. Um, we didn't really get a lot of damage here. Uh, we've only got a couple broken units, one dead unit. Not much, so in terms of putting them all up front because simply he's not gonna move into N3, these units aren't even necessary. You just need to break the flanks and he'll know that N3 is a bad spot to move because he can't afford to break there. So he's got to be forced to be moved around. These units are concealed. And so are these units. <clears throat> this 8 zero is concealed. So only the units up front. So defensive fire phase for the Japanese. Uh, I don't think he has any. There's no point in firing on this unit because he'll be eliminated. These guys are final fired. So that's it for the Japanese. Advanced fire phase for the Americans. They actually have a whole crap load of firepower. They've got um, six firepower here, six firepower here, and one here. Uh, oh, and uh, some firepower right there. So 612, let's see if he's got 16. So we've got five firepower, halved, which is two and a half, halved again because he's pinned, which is 1.75, no, 1.25, round up to two plus one to three. Okay, and then we've got this unit here, uh, and I think we've got point blank fire too, no? can't be six right no it can't possibly be six so normally he'd have six it would be three so you just divide that in half if whatever's normal so, so he'd be three and this unit here would be doubled halved and halved so he's four halved and halved be one so that's four firepower plus 12 would be 16 firepower plus two uh right in the middle again light jungle dense jungle they may fire group these units may not fire group. These units may not. These units may fire group. So we've got 16 firepower plus two. That's actually a decent shot. They roll six and cower. So that will be a eight on the 12 shot, which is a one morale check. A nine and an 11. Uh, that's actually an ELR failure. A 9 is a fail. And an 11, uh, based on a 1 morale check, is an ELR failure. So let's see if we can... Uh, uh, we'll have to replace him. Hold on. All right, so there's the ELR failure here from this unit. He's now a 347. Half that's 237. And, um, yeah, the Americans actually could advance to close combat right there. Uh, uh, that would eliminate two units. That would be risky. I'd probably drop the medium, leave it behind for the 238 to pick up 
and then uh, our leader's broken here. He's got a route. Uh, he'll have to route here. The eight minus zero will come back to rally him. So that's it for the advanced fire phase. Uh, route phase, this unit is eliminated for failure to route. We'll get rid of the DM over here. We'll just put it in the back. And then our leader here will have to route here. Only two movement factors. Um, and then this unit, ooh, yeah, he could brought back. See, here's what I was talking about before in the instance. This is a light jungle hex, right? If that was a dense jungle, he wouldn't be able to route back there. So this is going to be a hell of a shell game because I'm going to stack these units here. These units here. And I'll shrink them down a little bit. And then this unit wants to come on as well. So he's going to be moving over here. But these guys will be moving up. So that's the route phase there. And then we have the advance phase. That's risky. But we know no other concealed units are in that location. But that's risky. Um, one, two, three units, half the Japanese forces up front. Um, uh, we've got two squads off board, two squads here, three squads here. Um, I think we're going to, um, that's going to be two to one. That's going to be a six for a kill. Um, we're going to try it. We're going to advance in a close combat here. Um, this unit's pinned, this not possessed. Five five eight will advance up here. Uh, the eight zero. Well, these guys will advance on here. Eight zero. We'll go here. Stack over here. Will they're just going to move back on the trail? Again, there's not going to be any Japanese units in these locations to fire upon me. If they want to assault move to advance phase, that's fine. I've got three squads and eight minus one leader, so they're going to be destroyed. So um, this looks like a close combat, possibly a melee. So let's see what happens at this location. All right, so they're going to advance into close combat here. And all the other advances are done. Let me get rid of that concealment. It's erroneous. I had to move some counters around. We've got two squads here that are concealed. Hopefully maintain their concealment for any other Japanese that might be popping up. And then we've got the two squads here. So let's go for, uh, there's no other advanced phase. Route phase is done. Close combat phase. Let's go ahead and zip this around for the Americans. To have a facial view, to have a full, full frontal, full frontal. Full money going on here. So uh, what are our ambush modifications here? We've got the Japanese, which are minus one stealthy. They're in jungle. And then the raiders are minus one for being raiders. <coughs> Excuse me. So minus one raiders, plus one jungle. They negate one another. And the Japanese have a minus one from being Japanese. Japanese have a net minus one. So let's roll the uh, yellow and green die. Let's see if they ambush. Americans roll a four, Japanese roll a two. That will, will be a Japanese ambush. This is going to be bad. This is going to be bad. So looking at our handy dandy infantry chart. Close combat table. We've got the Japanese here. Right? Five firepower. To 10 firepower, that's a 1 to 2. And we don't need to know that's a quick reference chart because we're not idiots. All right. So that's a 1 to 2. We did ambush. So that makes us hand-to-hand -hand close combat. A 6. Yeah, this is going to be bad. We need a 6 for casual reduction. We need a 7 because we're Japanese. First, At least one of them is a first line unit. The other guy's a second line, which makes important that you know which guys have ELR failed. So that makes it a seven, and they were ambushed, which makes it an eight. 
I need a seven to kill two units. It doesn't look so good. All right, Japanese, here we go. And they roll a 10, so they miss. So the Americans, being ambushed, have a two to one hand to hand close combat. They are plus one for being ambushed, but they have a nine, so they need an eight for casualty reduction. And Japanese, they get missed one on that one. And they roll a nine, so there is no effect there. Wow, both of them needed a ton to get on that one. So that's our close combat table supplied by Neil Eulen. Uh Great modifications he's made on that. Uh, download that stuff. Add it to your Vasil logs. Add it to your TTS. Whatever. It's um, it's a different version now. I think it's 1.6. But uh, this is pretty sweet. So, melee. Interesting. Can't even roll 7. So, uh, what we have going on here is we have a... A lot of badness going on there. Actually, there should be a squad under there. Anyway, no worries. Uh, yeah, okay. Hmm. If they break, they will probably die. So, it's going to be interesting. All right, so that's the end of American turn one. Japanese turn two, rally phase comes. We have no rally phase. Remove the pin. We have no rally phase for the Japanese. We have a recovery from the 238. This will be a plus, plus two for jungle. Rolls a five. I think the 558 could try to recover. He rolls a two, he'll recover. I don't think he's not gonna be able to find. Uh, that's not too bad, it'd be 16. All right. We got a DM unit over here. That's our nine minus two liter or an eight minus one liter now, technically. Eight zero. Uh, DM drops that down to a four. The rally terrain boosts it to a five. Let's see if we could roll the five. We roll a six, not good enough. The unit beneath him. He's the same thing because he's got the same base eight morale. Eleven will not do anything, but they do lose their DMS status. All right, so let's go on to the uh, prep fire phase for the Japanese player. He's got some des deciding to do. Well, let's swing it around from his perspective. We've got a unit back here. It's high tailing it. We could prep fire into this location. If we do that, we might actually step reduce our units. But if we break those units. Um, they will probably die in close combat. They're going to be a one to two hand to hand anyway. It's going to need a seven for a casual reduction, uh, a nine for a casual reduction if I break them. They're melee, so uh, he's still going to need a lot to kill me. If I break one, they're most likely going to die. So I think. I don't think he will fire. These guys might fire. Just to blast the living crap out of him. Because if we fail morale check, it doesn't really matter too much. That'd be 24 firepower. Firing into that location. 24 plus 2. Probably a 2 morale check. Uh, we can if we can, uh, do another step reduction. We're just going to assume these guys are going to be eliminated. That's not really the ratio that we want. Um, because we should have killed them in the first place. But if we fire into that melee and they get stepped reduced, then, then they could possibly be broken on the Americans ensuing defensive fire. So these guys are going to fire at 20 firepower. They're not in good order, so they're not going to lose concealment. So that's a 20 plus 2. Uh, these guys are going to fire 8, 16. That's another 20 plus two. That may kill those may kill those units there, but at least it will eliminate the Japanese units. That's something that you might want to consider. Hmm. I think if we break the Americans in here, I think if we step reduce us and break one American, I don't think the Americans will fire at that point.
That's interesting. All right, so what I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to drop back. May prep fire somebody. If I prep fire him in there, because he's going to be safe. He can prep fire and, and retreat. And he can go 2-4 over here and join him here. So that's probably what we're going to do. We're going to fire Goto, medium machine gun, 228. We're going to fire 8 firepower plus 1 that location. So that's going to um, give us a chance to break those units. 8 plus 1, and I roll a snake eyes. This is going to be hurting. So it's going to be a K2. So someone takes a casual reduction. That includes everybody. And then the rest of the people take a two morale check. So in starter kit, I guess only one person takes it. So he does get ready to fire with a machine gun. Important to note. So uh, let's go the first two rolls. One each. So we got a six for Japanese and a three for the American. And then we've got a one for the American and another six for the Japanese. So of those two Japanese units that have a six, the top one will be the, the uh, yellow roll. So the yellow is a one, the bottom is a four. So the bottom unit is casually reduced. So he's just a half squad. And everybody takes a two morale check. So um, that's, uh, that's not good. So let's go with the Japanese first. Let's go with the one, three, seven, he's a five. He rolls a six, he will break. The three, four, seven, he's a five. He rolls a five, he's pinned. American units need sixes. Top unit rolls an eight, will break. Bottom unit rolls an eight, and they will break. So both these units did break. And that's still a melee. We still have a pin, though. Only one guy's pinned. And this guy's okay. Uh, did that guy break? I think this guy broke. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cash reduction, cash reduction, he broke. Oh, I think he broke. Oh, I can't even remember. So we got a DM on that guy. You got a pin here, this is a one and a half to ten. That's minus like 50. Um, damn, that's still pretty good. That's still pretty good. Half firepower, yeah, that's, that's still pretty good. So but the problem now is now that the Americans are broken, if even if we fire in there, he's still gonna have firepower and this unit will most likely be eliminated. Um, the, and if we destroy these, if we injure, we're gonna have to fire in there anyway, or join the combat. And considering he doesn't have a lot to join in there and we can't see any other units, the only person that would join it would be this 447, theoretically moving over here. So, but the machine gun has maintained rate of fire. Uh, we don't need to break them anymore, but he is considered prep fired. We're no longer going to fire anymore. And the prep fires are where? Oh, right here. So the snake eyes is good enough to break the units. That's good for now. Um, no, the prep fire is going to move in phase. This unit's going to go two, four. Because the 9 minus 1 is going to join him here, or they'll both advance back. Most likely the 9 minus 1 will join him, because the 9 minus 1 is vulnerable to units just charging him. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move. Yeah, we don't want to get uh, past him that much. Should we assault move advanced phase? We're going to lose two squads for that. Um, I don't think I should move another unit in there just to kill, to try to kill two squads. That's not, that's not a good deal. 
I can move here to try and kill these units. He'll have an eight plus one on that shot there. Jumping to close combat. He'll have the he'll have the modifier there. Huh. I can kill these units in the corner. Then that would be bad news for the Americans. But all they have to do is get across the bridge. That's all they really have to do. Seven, four to seven. Let's see, one, two and a half, nine and a half. We've lost two. I'm going to move the 447 here. He's going to come out of hidden status, which will flip him this way. Two, four. We'll come here. Uh, that unit isn't concealed. The guy in the. the uh, yeah, I guess he is, huh? No, he fired. He shouldn't be concealed. <clears throat> but they are non hidden. Hidden units are facing me. Oh, these guys aren't hidden either. And then I'm thinking about advancing one of these guys here. Or maybe ambush. Because I think the Americans are just going to go this way. They're not going to go down the path anymore. They're just going to go this way. But if I can kill these guys. These guys are all broken. Those are all bad news. Um... Let's just go two, four, then this guy will be known. He's still going to be hidden here. We're going to keep him hidden. Just in case this maintains a melee and he throws another guy in there, then I can shoot at him. These guys are leaving. All right, that's, uh, that's that movement, this movement over here. These guys will come out of hip status. We'll go one, go uphill, two, three, four, five this location here this unit still hip and then that's it for movement defensive fire will the americans defensive fire in this location they have to um these guys are dead anyway okay i didn't flip that okay these guys are five ten uh, they're going to fire 20 firepower plus two. The Americans did anyway. 20 firepower plus two is 11. Jeez. 13 is a straight up miss. So he's defensive fired. These units will fire. He'll fire two machine guns, eight, and then two firepower here. Exact same shot. 20 firepower plus two. They roll a four with no rate of fire, no cower. 20 plus two is a only a three morale check. Let's go with the Japanese units first, the broken unit. He needs a three. He rolls a three. This unit here needs a four. He rolls a six. So this unit becomes a half squad, pinned half squad. He will turn to state two. Okay, and then these units here have two morale checks for the Americans. First unit rolls an eight, fails. Second unit rolls an eight, and geez, and fails. These guys will turn to state two. Hopefully those are house squads. Yep. Okay, there we go. House squad number one, house squad number two. Which, un which is unfortunate because now it's easier for this unit to kill them. But these units need to die because these units have to die or are going to die. Uh, DM is irrelevant, to be honest with you. So those guys final fired. Uh, these guys could fire an 01 if they needed to. This unit could defensive fire into these locations if you wanted to. No need to because no units can be set up there. No point in firing there. 
That's it for the American defensive fire phase. Moving on to the Japanese advanced fire phase, which there is none. Route phase, uh, let's remove these counters here. Route phase, there is none because they're in melee. There's no route for the American, no route for the Japanese. And then advanced phase, we're going to advance these units over here. And this unit's going to remain. This unit's going to advance here. This unit is going to advance here with him. They will both gain concealment at the end of turn, so I'll just put that. And this unit will advance back here. Gain concealment as well at the end of the turn. All right, so these are known units to the Americans. He is unknown to the American. On my left-hand side. Or I can put him straight up and down. I'll put him upside down. He's the only hip unit left other than this guy. Let me put him up. Hip unit. There we go. So he's not facing any real direction. So, and then we have no routes. Let's go with close combat phase. This unit is pinned, has one firepower. His defenders have four firepower. His defenders have four firepower. I need to take that, deselect that off. So we have uh, one to four in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Oh, uh, I don't think. Yeah, so it's still hand-to-hand -hand combat because it was initialized as hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, let me double check that real quick. Yeah, that's an interesting note. Um, there's only one good order, uh, multi-man counter or unit that is in melee. And that was a hand-to-hand -hand combat when it started. When it starts hand-to-hand -hand combat, it remains hand-to-hand -hand combat, regardless if everyone is pinned after that. So there might've been a distinction where if they were pinned, the hand-to-hand -hand combat is dissolved. But considering they're jumping on top of one another, you would think that would be the case. So let me just spin this around here. So it's a one to four, minus one for first line Japanese, minus one for hand-to-hand -hand combat, minus two for broken. So it's a one to four, minus four, he needs a nine for a casualty reduction. And he rolls an eight and they are both eliminated. without a chance of retribution since they're broken. This unit remains DM. This unit pinned will be removed at the end, end of the turn. Okay, so that's it at the end, end of a uh, Japanese player turn one. Let's see what happens in the American player turn two. They need some help. All right, so we start American turn two out of seven. Let's see what happens. Let's start with the rally phase. We got a wounded leader here. Needs an eight, nine for being in suitable terrain. He rolls an eight, he's fine. Unit beneath him needs a nine as well. Rolls a 10. Actually, it's an eight minus one leader. Uh, 10 will rally him. He's going to be an eight minus one leader. Then he can be used to rally this unit. He is rallied. And then uh, no concealment loss. This guy's going to swap. He's going to grab the medium machine gun here. <sighs> Maybe not, uh, but he can't really move very far without it. And um, he may not need to, to be honest with you. Yeah, he's going to keep both. We need these for the... This still is going to be used for a scout. So uh, uh, rally phase for the Japanese. We have none. The DM remains. So we have the American turn movement phase. No prep fire. We don't need to prep fire against this unit. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to move. We're going to assault move here. Move a 238 there. We're going to assault move a 558 five, here. Um, this is going to be a two, 4 plus 2 attack. I don't think we're going to bother. We may wait for somebody else to move i don't there's no real targets again that's a two plus two it's not it's not going to have any effect he assault moved over here two plus one um uh, two plus one will eliminate him though yeah we'll go ahead and fire the two plus one now that we think about it 
because then we can lose concealment on our 04 unit and eliminate him. Two plus one rolls a seven, uh, rolls an eight, no effect, first fired. He'll follow it up with a one plus one. Eight, no effect, he's final fired. All right, this unit's gonna be eliminated now. Uh, this unit was concealed. All right, we're going to go two, four to stay out of the Q3 row, just in case there's some other baddies around. Obviously no fire. This unit has six portage points. Oof, three portage points more than he has. I think we're just gonna move the leader. We're gonna move the leader and one of these squads over in this location. And we'll transfer them in, in the advanced phase. This unit could be picked up by this unit. Uh, uh, you can't do that in, you can't carry guys and start a kit, wonderful. So we're gonna go two, three. This unit here will go two, four, right there. Um, actually, we're going to go two, four here and lose concealment because we're going to be in line of sight of the two, three, seven. That way this five, five, eight can keep its concealment for further, sorry, God damn it, for further, um, stealthiness later on. So we got our line of units. We're going to, we're going to push this unit here. We have three squads. You know, he's got all but two or three of his units left to remain, but we're going to stay in the top row, two, four, six, because we can't move in the dense jungle yet. And again, we can't be defensive fired upon in any of these, any of these locations, and we're not going CX by any, by any stretch of the imagination. So that's what we got going on here. And um, that's it for the Americans movement. Japanese defensive fire, there is none. I'm not gonna bother firing here. The idea of this is to uh, catch him on the run. So if he bounces into me or something like that, then we can uh, we can deal with that. We really wanna kill the leader and injure him or what, what the case may be, or leave him there for when they move back and they break, we create a problem for them later. So um, that's the idea there, no defensive fire. Uh, we're gonna remove this advanced fire. Um, we're going to fire this unit here, six firepower plus two into that location. Oops. Rolls a six and a two, which is an eight, no effect. Two plus two from this unit, uh, six, no effect. Um, huh, this unit actually didn't move. He can fire both his medium machine guns. Fires eight firepower plus the five five eight. We'll keep the leader concealed. We don't need a director fire. Uh, that'll be twelve firepower plus two. Uh, five with rate of uh, no rate of fire because advanced fire phase. So twelve firepower plus two is seven. Or one morale check. The broken unit will roll first. He needs a five. He nine. He will be eliminated. Two three seven. We're rolling 11 ELR fell, but we're not going to bother replacing him because he's going to be eliminated. Actually, yeah, boom. So that's kind of what we wanted. So keep our, kept our concealment here. Stack our units there. Uh, that's all for the advanced fire phase. Uh, we could fire here. We might as well. Um, there's a 558 here and a 558 here. Both of those will be six firepower in the advanced fire phase because they're halved and doubled. So there'd be a 12 firepower plus two attack to see if there's a hidden enemy unit there. The 11, they can combine fire because not both of them are not in dense jungle. Only one of them is. And uh, this unit over here doesn't need to fire on anybody again because it's outside the Japanese setup area. So route phase, uh, this unit is eliminated. And then advanced phase, we're going to uh, we're going to swap weapons. Advance here. 
Why is that unit there? And this unit's going to go here. Uh, we might as well advance over here uh, because they're all dead. And unfortunately, it's not what the Japanese wanted to have, have happened. Um, these units will advance as well. Let's go to R2. And this unit will go to Q3. Both of them will not go because they will are devastating in close combat. P3, we're not concealed, so we're not going to advance into P3 quite yet. And then this unit over here, he will probably have to start splitting up. We're going to go to V1, U2, and uh, we're going to go two units over here in the leader because we don't want to get jumped in close combat here. Uh, if we do, we don't want to lose both units. We're going to have to start spreading these units out pretty good because we see what the Japanese can do in close combat. He's going to gain concealment at the end of the turn. Uh, they may not. It depends if they're alive. This unit is good order. He will gain, he will gain concealment. And they... Oops. In terms of already been moved. I'm just going to reset them for the beginning of the turn. Easy thing you can do is you can turn them left and right. Just like you do face to face. Uh, this is an ambush situation here. The uh, Japanese... Oof, this is going to be bad. Alright, so he's no longer hidden. This is going to be a plus one for the American. Minus one for Raider. Uh, so they cancel. Uh, minus two. For concealment for the Japanese, minus one for stealth. So for the Japanese, it's minus three to the American zero. Uh, American rolls a three, Japanese rolls a five, so there's no ambush. So this is going to be this is going to be gone. So that will be a straight up one to two for the American. One to two in close combat. Rolls a nine, no effect. Two to one for the Japanese player. Oops. Can't roll in the stupid dice tower. Two to one. Rolls a seven. Will casually reduce the unit, which will eliminate it. Unfortunately. But the Japanese unit hidden uh, is then exposed. He's obviously going to have to run from this unit. So good and bad for the Japanese. I mean, he could have fired 12 even and do whatever. But that's what happens when you uh, leave a guy behind so um huh so advanced phase right there these guys do not gain concealment he does not gain concealment and that's the end of the american player turn and we're going to head on to the japanese player turn too all right rally phase uh no rally is going to be occurred i switched to the view again so no rally phase for either side everyone's good and gone uh, prep fire phase, we're not going to have any. We're going to go straight to movement phase. Let's see what we do. Guys across the river. Um, I think they're going to stay where they are. Uh, it's going to be plus one and W8 anyway. He's going to stay where he is for one more turn. He may move back over to W8 in case these units up front are going to get close down and dirty and come across. So um, we'll just head and move some guys back. Assault, assault move advance phase. So we don't have to move back that far. So we'll go one, two, three, four. Actually, there's two units there. One, two, three, four. We're going to move one guy there. And these guys are noon. I think we're just going to orient the screen here for now on. Um, simply because it's getting a little more compact. One. I think he just needs to go one. Or just two. Let's just go two here. This guy will go. Let's 
And then these units will go two, four. And be done with that. Again, this is going to be a natural barrier. This, this guy's going to set up for another barrier. So essentially, I'm using the terrain as a barrier to the Americans. He still has to go through me. And these guys, hopefully, I'm, if I kill one to one, then that's barely enough to go there. And hopefully this unit can kill another unit. But he's unknown. So, and then, uh, and that's it. There's not going to be any defensive fire. We could defensive fire in these locations here. Um, might as well for uh, there's a bunch of garbage rolls four plus two here s3 seven no effect four plus two to r3 no effect uh might as we've already fired in p3 and we've q4 i think we've we haven't fired in q4 i'm not going to fire the lmgs it's going to be eight fire power plus two seven eight nine will be pentashek nobody's there so we're scouting out areas uh, this unit can fire here in P3. I think we did that. 4 plus 2. 10. No effect. No one's going to be in V2. No need to fire there. So that's it for the uh, Americans' defense fire. No Japanese advance fire. No route phase. Advance phase of Japanese. I don't think I want to move up here. Because he could assault move advance phase. Or assault move and fire. And he can go 2, 4, 6. I think I'm just going to stay here, to be honest with you. I don't want to get, I want him to do a full motion move on me. And then I could move later on or do some sort of other maneuver after that. Actually, he might want to advance here. Yeah, we're going to advance here. So go two, four, to stop the two, four, six garbage. Two, four, six. And then, um, so he can't, and then advance here. We're going to stop that move there. And of course, he doesn't know this unit's here. And um, these guys are just going to stay down here for right now. Uh, see to see how the Americans develop. He'll probably move next turn. And that's it for the Japanese player turn. These guys will gain concealment. I'm just going to put a conceal on both of them because I'll probably likely move them later, independent of one another. And uh, that's it. We're going to go. America turn three. All right. So here we have the beginning of turn three. Let's try and figure out what the Americans need to do for from this point on. It's one third of the game is gone. We pretty much have uh, two thirds left. Let's just uh, itch more. So where we are based on our plan. Uh, well, kind of nowhere. We're kind of flanked off to this top side. The Japanese kind of pushed us off of our kilter. We were going to penetrate through here and go down the road, try and fight. Uh, we're not quite there yet. Uh, the most important thing, I think, is to take our mortar, which is right here. And this, this I think this is very important. The medium machine gun is, I think, under this position as well. We need to move both of these units and we need to get them to our still objective. Our objective is right here at S7. The mortar still needs to be put up there. We need to bring it to bear. Um, if we need to take another casualty, two of five, five eights, then that's what it takes. And, um, but we need to get it there so we can have an opportunity to assault across the way which would be over in these three hexes here. So without the mortar, I think that can generate lots of firepower. Four minus one is like a six chart. Um, and that's just going to whittle down the Japanese. Even if all of them move across the river, they're going to be missing morale checks. The leaders will be dying fast. And um, so the mortar is key in that aspect. So that's the plans for the mortar and the machine guns. They still need to get there. The problem is we only have three other units. These two guys here. To be able to punch a hole. Wounded 9 minus 2 in squad. They will have to slink their way to the path. So the leader can move faster on the path. 
<clears throat> it'll take him this turn to get to the path. Uh, probably actually even more than that. Yeah. So he's going to go two, four, which he can't. So he'll go one, three, advance to put him up one row higher. And then he can go two, three, advance. So the nine minus two can get here next turn. Well, in two turns. So that'd be turn five. Turn six, he can get to the bridge. Turn seven, he could possibly get across. He's still worth two victory points. So that's something to think about in terms of just sheer victory points. He, he, he can't be ignored by the Japanese. And um, he's still two victory points, just like a squad. So And he could be the leader that makes the difference because we'll only have the other two leaders here in the bottom, 8-1 and 8-0. We don't know what's going to happen to them. Again, one must be a leader. If we lose the leaders, which means we don't really want to take them into close combat, then then we're doomed. Uh, we just simply lose the game. So that's something the Japanese might think about is if they can target the leaders from here on out and try to kill them directly, and um, then the game is over. You know, kill three units and you win, period. So uh, target leaders primarily, get them double broken, try to kill them. All right, so with that, let's uh, proceed with the American turn. Um, I think the Americans up here, uh, well, we'll just go through the plan. It's not that big a deal. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the rally phase, there are no broken American units. We can kind of swing it this way, I guess, from the American perspective. There are no broken Japanese un or American units or Japanese units. So we'll go to the prep fire phase of which... Um, Theoretically, what you could do with these units over here is you could prep fire. You could be very conservative, and you could prep fire into these locations, these level unit three locations. To find the last hidden unit, uh, you can counter count, and you could figure out that it's quite possible there's only one hidden unit left. You can creep that way. Uh, most likely, uh, I would presume the hidden unit would be here and here in a normal game um without actually me knowing that it's right here so i would presume it would be in one of these locations simply because it's easily defendable he's got his line here set up you know he's dropped back there to a solid line this unit over here is a regular unit of course it could be again that's what brings it up here so he they both can defend this location so things to think about in terms of how, how to approach the americans on that side And um, and then the same the same sort of thing here. Uh, I don't think there would be an R, a unit in R three simply because they're kind of discombobulated from these units. Uh, I would again, I would suspect one in S four. So most likely we're going to head to S three, maybe fire into S four, but we probably want to avoid this unit. Um, so we're probably going to try and flank around this way to avoid this guy. Hopefully, try and destroy these units so we could take this unit on we really don't want to go to q4 you know that's not you know the the best place to be it's the it's in the mouth of the of the beast so to speak so q4 is kind of off limits we can't break and just route back we could break and route back but there's just so much firepower there it's not even i don't think it's worth a challenge attempt a challenging it um i think you might go to s3 and then r4 Assault move to S3 and go to R R3 at that point. Um, make this unit make a decision. Do I want to fire here? Do I not want to fire there? And at this point, I don't think I want to put two units in one location simply because of the Japanese ability to annihilate units in close combat. And they may have their concealment maintained. So I think the Americans are going to try to just creep up this turn. I think that's be the best thing for the Americans. Nine minus two over here is... Out of the out of the story, I think once we get him back into the mix, that gives us a minus one modifier on this side. Even though he's wounded, I'm just going to keep him on the road, which gives him pretty much full mobility. So he's getting, the plan is to move the nine minus two wounded leader to the path and keep him on the path. That'll be a nice central location for any rally rally points, uh, for the most part, right? And also quickest way to get a leader possibly across to w7 
use every unit in your capacity to maximize the effectiveness of your strategy. So, um, again, full guys, I the, the 238, I guess he died somewhere. Um, yeah, he died over here, I think in close combat or something. But, um, so here we go. Just, uh, no prep fire. We're just going to go straight to movement. So, um, we are going to assault move this unit here. And then this unit is concealed. So at least that'll be half firepower. So, um, we're going to assault move th this unit here first, the next, see if he will take a shot at that. Uh, let's see, we've got 16 firepower. It's going to be eight firepower plus two minus one for the leader. Yeah. I think we could take that shot. Again, we can't combine fire groups, even if there were a unit in um, S4, we can't combine fire groups from that aspect. Let me just spin this guy around. Let me spin these guys around. So we wouldn't be able to combine a fire group anyway. So we're going to take a, um, an eight up one, nine minus one plus two dense jungle doubled and halved. So eight up one should strip his concealment. And, uh, I think we should be good to go at that point. Let me get my dice tower here. So the Japanese are ready to go. Eight up one's a good shot. It most likely give me one more out track. And a 10 will not yield anything. A 10 will yield a uh, goose egg. No rate of fire, of course. So he will be marked with a first fire marker. Now he can subsequent first fire against that unit. And, um, wow, that'd be a four, four up one. I think we're good. I think we need the machine gun. We don't want subsequent first fire the machine, medium machine gun to make it break down any more than it needs to. All right. So with that successful move, again, concealment. If I just keep moving and move into it, I lose my concealment. Now I have my concealment. He doesn't. So he may take a shot later on. Mortar boy. I think we're going to move. Um, oh, we can't move into here first. So one of these guys has to move first because it's dense jungle. So we're going to assault move here. And then we're going to assault move over here. Leader will move over here. This unit will move two or with the leader. We're just going to keep the concealment on. I think this guy ganked. Uh, I didn't have a concealment on him. I think he fired earlier last turn. Uh, wounded leader, nine minus one, five, five, eight. An ASL, you could pick him up and carry him. Squat at SK, you may not, so you're screwed. We're going to go one, two, three. That's probably a better spot anyway, just in case these guys break, they can route centralized directly back to the nine minus two leader. Okay, let's take a look at this guy over here. So he sees a unit in front of him. This unit. So if we assault move advance phase, he either has to fire or jump us in close combat, which we would have the advantage. And then, um, if that's what he wants to do is do that, then that's fine. If not, most likely he'll move back one or one this way. Um, and at that point, we'd have the advantage because we'd be here and here. And then we could assault move, assault move this way next turn. And then we could jump him in close combat with concealment. So that's the idea there is to push him back as fast as possible. So that's probably what we're going to do. Again, we don't know where the other hidden units are, which is right in front of our face, but we're going to find that out soon enough. So we're going to assault move our um, 558 here. And we're going to assault move one unit here. He's also concealed. And then um, this unit is going to go, D doubt that anyone's going to be here simply because it's a little bit off the beaten path. I mean, the VCs are over here. So the VCs are here. 
Most of the Americans are going to be coming this way. They might be coming like this. To swing this far out and come down is highly unlikely. So most likely this row, maybe this position, possibly even this position might have a unit. There might be a 25% chance there might be a hidden unit here if there were one on this side. But at this location, highly unlikely. I have to erase that manually. So that's kind of what we're thinking about there in terms of the Japanese thought processes. So we're going to we're going to go two and we're going to go four. And again, because this unit is not known, this guy's not a known enemy unit. He doesn't cause loss of concealment over here. He could drop his concealment and drop possibly, yeah, he could drop his hip. And then this unit would lose concealment, but that that defeats the whole purpose, doesn't it? So not necessary to do that. Leader, uh, we're going to take send the leader. We're going to assault move the leader here since nobody fired. Again, centralize it, spread out. They're all equally vulnerable, but if two units, if they get ambushed, they can be easily be killed, as we've seen previously in the last game and in this game. <clears throat> I believe in this game as well. So here's all of our units on the map. Uh, I may rotate him in that position here. So, anyway, uh, subsequent for Spire. Actually, these, un these units uh, these units have moved over here. Subsequent first fire from this unit. Um, we're going to fire the uh, 447 and the 228, but not the machine gun. So it's going to be a 6 up 1, on, or actually half, so it's going to be 2 up 1 on that unit. Um, You know what? We might also fire the machine gun. That's what it's there for. If he jumps us in close combat, kills us, we can't use it anyway. So we might as well use it on a four attack. Uh, four up one because it's halved, have double, have twice and doubled. So four up one. We roll five on the four chart. That will be a six normal morale check. He will lose his concealment. And uh, normal morale check for the five, five, five eight. Ah, oh, God, he rolls an 11. That's a bunch of garbage. All right, so I'll have to get a DM marker. Where's the DM marker? So that's a, that was a 4 2 which a shot for the Japanese. Unlucky roll for the Americans, as always. So, again, uh, small front. We're going to have to probably move the medium over here. I don't know. we will probably just move one guy up. Move the uh, We're going to have to move the leader up anyway. Probably shift these guys over. Uh, doubtful that they're going to come forward because of my firepower. I'm going to have to pressure him. I'm going to put at least a 5.58 here with a medium to pressure him. Uh, those guys get shredded if they don't do anything about it. Uh, no other fire for the Japanese. So let's go to uh, um, uh, advanced fire to the Americans. At this point, all these units might as well fire forward because those are occupiable hexes. Every single one of these hexes could be a potential enemy unit. As well as this one so we could take our pick and our shots we're just going to fire forward because we're not going to move into t3 t3 if we were to move into t3 we'd become cx in the advanced phase and that means if there's any enemy units in there you're just going to be screwed you do not want to advance into t3 or advance into bamboo to become cx and then have to deal with actually just come uh yeah cx and then have to deal with an ambush situation um at the end of the uh close in the close combat phase um uh, it's bad news he'll have like minus five to kill you so he will just slaughter you and um so that's not going to happen that's going to be a movement phase action we're going to have to bounce out oddly enough this is one of the differences in asl if there were a hidden unit there, you could move into that location with a hidden enemy unit and stay in that location. Problem is you'd become CX pinned and then you're really screwed in the close combat phase. In um, in starter kit, that doesn't that allow to happen. You simply bounce back. And to be honest with you, it's safer to attempt to move. Oddly enough, 
it's completely opposite in SK of when to move into bamboo. You want to move into bamboo in the movement phase. So if anybody's there, they're detected and you bounce off. If you advance in the advance phase, you still stay in that hex and then you get screwed. So, uh, and that's, that's, that's again, a, a complete opposite tactic that you have to change from going to SK to an ASL is that no one wants to move in here unless you know it's completely empty um, because you can CX and pinned in the movement phase. So you can only move in there. You're not advancing out. So you might as well advance there in ASL, but in SK, you can pop, pop on him, try to move on him. You'll bounce out. You both will lose concealment, and then you could advance in anyway. So um, completely different change. changes the, the entire complexion, to be honest with you, of movement in PTO between SK and, and ASL. So uh, again, uh, huge difference, huge difference in when you want to move into bamboo. And to have to change that between pretty much, you know, uh, you know, evil twin games can be difficult to keep in mind. <clears throat> so we're going to advance fire straight forward. So doubled and halved. Uh, it's still going to be four firepower, uh, I believe. So he's got five halved in the, for the advance fire phase and doubled is canceled and then half for concealment. So... It would be two and a half, three, four, four plus two on each of the shots. This one here will be a four plus one. Four plus two, four plus one, four plus two. So let's do a four plus two here from right to left. Roll well, six cowers. Uh, it's off the chart. Let's do a four plus one in the middle. Roll well, a six. That'll be a seven. That will be a pin task check. So this unit will come up and he will lose his concealment. And these units will you lose the concealments as well. Not this one, because he wasn't known before then. So that will be a pin to check. So wow, America's got lucky here. Oh, and he gets pinned. Ooh, oh, 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 hello. That is a huge difference. God, the American Japanese just got screwed. All right, this, this game might be uh, turning for the Americans quickly. In that case, since he got pinned, Guess where this unit's going to fire? Because there are no other units remaining. He might as well. Not, actually, he's going to keep his concealment. Um, because it's going to be plus two. This guy's going to be used to go into close combat. And these units are going to advance upon this unit over here. So that will give us a huge advantage in close combat. He's not going to fire. It's going to be a, a six plus two. Who gives a crap? It's, if you roll a five for morale check... Uh, that's a super low roll. I'd rather roll the five in close combat. If I need to roll the five, it's coming into close combat. So no point in wasting it on this roll here. Theoretically, quote, wasting it on that roll there. Uh, the effect will be will be irrelevant. Actually, it'd be a three to two if I jump into close combat, but I really don't care. I want to pin him, destroy him, get rid of this unit here. I want to kill them straight up, not cows or reduce them. All right, so that makes it good for these units over here uh fire over here is unnecessary because we just found the last unit so uh that's it for advanced fire route phase we're going to route here one location advanced phase now we could actually advance into s4 to be cx um or we could advance on this side and then move there that actually would be better We're going to advance here. That's actually, a, um, and he's going to be CX'd. And then, oh, we need to, we need to defend this unit. Uh, in that case, this unit will, um, he'll route back 2-4. The leader will route on this location. He'll move up one spot. Uh, medium machine gun. Mortar will advance here. This medium will advance here. Uh, no, this medium will stay here. So we can gain concealment. This unit with concealment. 
move there. At the end of the turn, these guys will gain concealment. Because they're not going to move up. He'll move... Um, he'll move here. He'll move there. So what, what will happen here is possibly I can get 2, 4, 6 and then advance to this location. And then have my mortar ready. And that way I'll only take a couple of shots from the mortars theoretically on that side. But uh, the dynamic has changed drastically by having that unit exposed. And now these units are over here. Again, being CX is a problem. But guess what? If he wants to engage me, he'll have to be CX as well. So essentially they'll cancel out. Knowing that there are no other hidden units in here, I could simply move there next turn or move out. So uh, it's slow going in there. So, and then advance, we'll advance over here. Uh, he'll advance into close combat. This unit should advance. I'm going to reduce his size. Should I advance here or advance here? We can't combine fire groups anyway. So that doesn't really matter. Let's try... Let's try and advance up here. And then the eight minus one will go with them as well. So this won't, unit won't be good order. If they stay alive at the end of the turn, he won't be good order. He'll be able to claim concealment as well as this unit. Oh, this unit already has concealment. So that's good. So it's a good turn for the Americans overall in terms of information. So nothing is gonna change down here. He's protected by the front line here. And we've got one little close combat here. So let's roll for ambush. Again, what we try, what we do explain at the beginning in the strategy ep episode, and this unit is now hidden or unhidden. So he's uh, right there. So this is, this is incredible. In Japanese, uh, minus one. Um, Americans are, and these are raiders. Minus one being a raider minus two for concealed plus one for this and net minus two he's going to have a plus one and a minus one for japanese so he's he's neutral so we have a negative two it looks like on the americans i think my numbers are right i think i got a couple numbers wrong last time watch the last video screwed up a couple numbers you're going to do that every once in a while um don't fret too much but they should be the same american rolls a three minus two japanese roll a one so no ambush, unfortunately. Actually, fortunately, uh, yeah, unfortunately for the Americans. It doesn't really matter um, because the Americans just lost out of minus one. So, And he will attack in close combat. So, so we're going to go to a five to four. That's going to be a one to one. No ambush. He needs a five for casual reduction. I will take casual reduction. I'm going to go okay with that. He rolls an eight. God, my Americans suck. And the Japanese are pinned. That's two firepower. He does not get hand-to-hand -hand because he is pinned. And um, it's two to five. Makes it one to three. Drops to one to four. And let me double check to make sure. I think they just get minus one in close combat. So one, I think one to four minus one. Needs a four. And he rolls a four. Uh, let me double check that minus one. All right, double checking. Again, looking through your SK rulebook uh, that you download from MMP. Highlight it all. Again, go, go get it right now. Stop watching this stupid video. Go download the rules from MMP, PDF, put it in your favorite PDF form or whatever. Anything that you can use to highlight and mark important sections of the rulebook. Um, the section that we're looking at here is top of page 29, top right corner. Um, extra minus one die, dice roll modifier versus infantry unless every Japanese infantry unit participating in that attack is pinned. So he does not get the minus one and he loses out on the casualty reduction. Huge, huge impact of pinning Japanese units in close combat. If you, and I'm going to take this in my future games, if you have a chance to, if, to see a unit, if he's pinned anywhere, go kick his ass. 
simply because he won't get the minus one modifier, you could still potentially ambush him in close combat. And his modifier, especially against these five, five, eights. I mean, these five, five, eights make him one to four. That's actually playable. So as long as he doesn't ambush you, right? Um, that's fine. If he wants to go into hand-to-hand -hand close combat next turn, which he will, that's a fine too. He's going to use a, he won't be pinned. He'll need a seven and will need a seven. So, um, that's just all there is to it. And then it's mono y mono. So the pinning really gives you the advantage first round. Unfortunately, my American has failed to, uh, capitalize on that mega bonus. So we're just going to find a melee counter and put it on these dudes. The pin will be gone. I'm just going to remove it right now. End of the close combat phase. Okay. Japanese turn three. Uh, first fire is gone. I'm going to put some of these on the opposite side of the river. Seriously. I like them all. Select none. All right. So Japanese, we've got a melee here. Can't do anything there. We're going to move these out of the way over there. Uh, so that unit's pro pretty much actually not gone, but we, we don't need to fire. We don't need to fire into this melee as the Americans simply because it won't do anything. Right. It's not going to break the unit. We could fire here. Let's say it reduces it to a three, four, seven. The other unit fires in there, loses the concealment. Again, the concealment's huge. This unit will gain concealment, by the way, because that unit's not in good order. I will double check that concealment rule in just a second. But let's finish this thought. If we fire here and he reduces and we're okay, and then we fire him, he gets okay. That's two to five. Guess what? It's one to three anyway. The odds will not change in this instance. Actually, that'd be a one to two for the Japs. It'll only go down by one. It won't make that much difference. It'd be from seven to eight, plus the possibility of breaking our own unit in the double shots to reduce it down to a two isn't worth it. it I don't think it's, it's just not worth it. You know, if we had three units in here and you had one at that point, you, you know, you, you might want to consider that, but highly doubtful, highly doubtful. So firing into melee, if this were a Russian unit, um, and there were a lot of Russian units that might want to reinforce or whatever, then you pop him. Or if there's multiple Russian units in there, then you pop him. Um, Japanese, um, you need to kill them quickly, um, and, and be done with it. One thing we could consider doing is reducing him. You know, if this is a two, three, eight, I would definitely fire in that location because we don't have the advantage. At that point, you're firing into the location to stripe him and then cause him to be a half squad. And you're essentially, you're just giving up the two, three, eight, like we did at the other end of the map. You're giving up your two squads because you know they're dead anyway. You just want to reduce their strength because once he's down to a three, four, seven, he's not coming back to a four, four, seven. He's losing firepower. So it goes from an eight firepower attack to a six firepower attack. Essentially, he just lost a minus one leader. And then if you reduce him down to a two, it goes down to the next column whatsoever. And then you just walk all over him. Then you just beat the shit out of him. So um, fighting against the Japanese, you have to take that into consideration of what your plan is to do. You may need to sacrifice more units to reduce the strength of the Japanese because they won't come back, you know. And let's say you uh, reduce him here, and then the next time he does casual reduction, he rolls 12. Well, then you get lucky, but you can't plan on that. So that's what we got there. Let me double check the concealment real quick for you guys. All right, here's another screwed up rule with concealment. Uh, A, 8.3.1 concealment gain, a good order unit in which this unit is. Gains concealment at the end of its player turn provided no non-hip unbroken enemy unit has an LOS to it and it is in concealment terrain. Um, this is an unbroken enemy unit and he has line of sight to this unit here. In squad leader, an ASL, 
This unit can gain concealment because it's based upon good order enemy units. Uh, maybe not. Anyway, um, no concealment gain from there. I'll have to check the concealment charts on that. All right, uh, same same swimming rule in ASL. <coughs> unbroken. Uh, essentially, you have to be unbroken. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether he's good order or not. If he was broken or hip, then you can gain it. But he's just screaming and yelling, so he does not gain. It doesn't matter. Uh, actually, it could be assault move advance phase. He might jump into close combat. That's a possibility to kill a leader. Um, that's a distinct possibility. But then we have three squads we have to deal with. All right. Japanese turn. Uh, no prep. We're probably not going to prep fire. We're just going to go ahead and move. Uh, I don't think he's going to prep fire again. He could assault move advance phase on top of these guys and kill them. Or uh, that might be that might be the, his best bet, to be honest with you. Kill the leader, because the other two leaders are over here. Actually, we have a rally. My bad. We have a rally right here. DM unit. And Nate's not going to cut it. So, he's good to go for next turn. Um, hmm. Let's look, let's look at it from the Japanese perspective. Americans up here, we've got two leaders, two leaders. I think we're going to, um, uh, there's a lot of firepower in this hex here. He could try to kill this leader here. Ken, the problem is if we kill this leader and we lose, this might be a done deal here. And then we'll have two to two. That might be worth it. And then over here, we have a leader in the back that's slow moving. And we have an eight zero that we can kind of attack. He'd have to protect that leader and wait to get him across at the end, which is a possibility. We're going to go for it. We're going to go for it. We're not going to prep fire. We're going to go straight to movement phase. So let's move our guy over here. Unfortunately, he's got a light machine gun. Um, we're going to assault move here. And that will, that will initiate a fire from this unit here. He'll go for uh, uh, five firepower plus one. So that's a four plus one shot from the American. And he rolls an eight, which is the worst thing he can roll. He's going to subsequent respire because he needs that concealment gone, period. He needs it gone. So that's going to be um, two plus one. And he rolls a six. Oh, Jesus, just right off the chart. Um... So that's it. Uh, we're not going to bother with, with, with residual fire because the assault moved. This unit can't move and none of these idiots are going to come over here. Actually, he could. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know. So uh, let's let's deal with these guys. Nothing changes else over here. It's got this unit here. We could still move our block. We don't want the assault move advance phase into close combat, most likely, because they'll have a minus one unless we want to fire upon them. Right, so if we want to fire up on him, that's fine, but that's going to be a plus two. That means these guys can assault move in advance phase. I'm not so sure. We're gonna to have to. We're just gonna to have to pin. We're gonna to have to pin him down in here. We'll have to make him do assault move in advance phase or make him move. Two, three, four. This guy is all by his lonesome. This is a 12 fire. No, that's a six fire power because he's concealed. All right, let's just back up for the Japanese. I think it's working so far. We've got 
possibly 16 firepower. One, two. I don't want to, because we, we're going to run out of real estate here pretty soon for the Japanese. And we don't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe across the street. Because that means the Americans right here, once they reach this position, they can fire group. We don't want that to happen. We want to screw with the Americans while they're in the dense jungle. Not when they get out in the light jungle. That's not that's not our win, that's not a part of our win condition as the Japanese. So in that case, that's going to be he's not concealed. He didn't not concealed yet. He fired. Americans turn, they moved away. Well, I guess he I guess he's still not concealed. Maybe maybe I screwed that up. Assault move event he's not gonna move assault move events if he's by himself in that location. Let's just go back. You can go one, two, and then and then just stay there. And he can kind of block the exit over here. He can still, he still has to exit. Yeah, we're just gonna back up one hex right now. One. Actually, going to go to two just in case it gives us advanced possibilities. If we wanted to stay here, then we could just advance back in that location. Otherwise, we could possibly advance here, not have concealment, which wouldn't be the best bet. Or we can decide to just get across the road. It's only going to be eight firepower from across the road. Not the best. I'd much rather have a 16 firepower um, with my other units stacked with me. So. Uh, but I think he needs to get concealment first. That will give it, that gives us more options when he's got concealment. That's it for the America the, for the Japanese movement phase. I think this leader here, again because these are seven morale units, I want to keep the mortars going. Two minus one's not bad. That 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 might give us uh, lots of rate, rates of fire and smoke. So we'll see what happens. The smoke may still come into play. And uh, we're just going to go with that. So no defensive fire on the Americans' part. We're not going to fire into here. He's already final fired. So nothing left to do there. Advanced fire for the Japanese. We're not going to advance fire. Nothing to shoot at here. What we can do here is that the, the uh, Japanese mortars will then fire. We're going to fire and we're going to acquire these locations here. One mortar is going to fire at R5. One mortar is going to fire an S6. So we're just rolling for non-malfunction. Top mortar is a nine, no rate of fire. Next mortar is a nine, exact roll, no rate of fire. <coughs> what that does is if I could find them, seriously, there they are. I'm not sure what the deal is here. Oh, one B. And then we'll clone it and he'll go to the uh, state is one we want a so one's just the top top bottom so we'll just go with that so we've got those acquired again we can get the negative two acquisition we can use that acquisition to drop smoke but then the acquisition has gone um i think yeah i'm pretty sure and uh so we're gonna have those zoned in so we need like a seven or an eight to land in those positions i think the that essentially negates the hindrance so we're prepping that area now don't lose concealment because no one's in line of sight and uh and be done with one. you know what we're just gonna and we're just going to call that All right, so A and B. Technically, he needs a prep fire there. So, um, 
he can get acquisition the advanced fire phase too anyway but you know half a dozen one six of the other so japanese moves no advanced fire route phase no route phase advanced phase we are going to advance on the americans here for final fire is gone i'll we'll put it over here and then Advanced phase, damn it, right there. He's already in melee. Uh, assault move, advance phase, assault move, advance phase, two, three. Actually, if he tries to run by me, I'll get plastered. So I'm gonna move here, and then we're gonna, gonna gain concealment on that unit at the end of the turn. He can come here, two, four. That's something to worry about. They both can come here, 2-4, two, 2-4, four, two, four, and we won't be able to go anywhere further. Hmm. 2-3-4, I'm not sure that, I think if they're gonna jump into close combat, we can kill them. Again, we just need to kill the leaders. He's got lots of units over here though. If we kill both of these guys, we're in good shape. We're gonna take this chance here. We have a we have a nine one leader that increases the morale. I'm not sure why that flipped. That increases the morale of our units here by one. So they're essentially their eight morale units. So we're going to keep the front there. It stops this unit from just simply moving here. We could blast him there as well. So this guy's going to be final protective firing until the cows come home because they have they have large morale and a minus one leadership modifier as well. So for all intents and purposes, they have nines. Just about, just about, very close. So let's go with an ambush here. We have, um, we've got the Raider minus one. We've got the jungle, which is the plus one in the Raider's favor. We're Japanese and we're concealed. So the Japanese concealed is minus three. The uh, disadvantages against us are two. So we have a net minus one for the Japanese. Uh, actually the leader as well. Almost forgot it. So that's an even up. Uh, did I say even up? Minus two, three, minus two, minus one, even. That's an even with the eight minus one later. Interesting. All right, let's see what happens. Three and a four. So uh, Japanese roll a three, Americans roll a four, no ambush. So the concealment is lost. And um, let's zoom into our melee areas over here. This leader's too big, he's big and fat. All right. So the Japanese one to two hand to hand close combat. Um, minus one because he's not pinned. And um, that's rock and roll. So it's a one to two, is a base six, minus one. He needs, he needs a seven for a casual reduction, six for an elimination. And he rolls a four. Uh, they are both eliminated, but the Americans get to attack back. Good Lord. So that's a six to four. That's a three to two minus one. So the Americans need an eight with a minus one. So a nine for casual reduction. Don't roll a 10. Rolls a six. So he's eliminated. Uh, LMG is not eliminated. So these guys are gone and this unit's gone. I think that's a semi win for the Americans. Um, Simply because, yeesh. Simply be on, um, maybe not. The losing the leader is always losing the leader is always a bad thing. All right, so we've got the same thing here: hand to hand close combat. Minus one is then engaged by the Japanese unit because he is no longer pinned, and so that's going to be a one to ten. So be same thing: one to two, minus one. He needs a seven. He rolls a nine. All right, here's where the American can take advantage of this. American is a one-to-one, -one, no modifier, so he needs a seven for a CR. American rolls a six and eliminates the unit. Wow. That's a huge cha change of events there. All right, so now we have three American squads that can do some damage. Now we just need a leader over. All right. So maybe the Japanese should have retreated. Now, now it's going to be rough. Now it's going to be rough. All right. So let's do it. 
Let's see what happens. In the American turn four. First thing we have, we have a rally in the upper corner right up here. Guy should rally with like a 10, pulls a six. He's up and going. And then we're gonna we're gonna fix these units here. Uh, you know, we'll just switch this way. That's why they're already oriented that way. So we have mortars there, and we have three, essentially three squads. I was wondering if we just just simply move up and beat the shit out of them. I think we just simply move up and beat the shit out of them. We don't have any leaders over here. The problem is the no leader, the no leader situation over here can be a big problem. Um, because if they break, they have to self rally. Two, four, six, eight, advance. We can move the eight zero that way. And the nine one can still creep down the path as the plan was. We're going to do that. All right. So, um, American rallies up and over, no prep fire movement phase. We're going to move the eight zero first. We're going to go two, four, six, eight straight away. And then we're going to go American turn four, one, two, three. One, two. We're going to assault move here. We're going to assault move here. Let's see the assault move here. Will that generate a fire? This is what that's the question. Uh, no. Assault move here will generate fire, and it will generate fire from this unit in the center. So that's going to be a twelve, uh, six fire power. Mm, six plus two. Huh. I don't think they're going to fire. And then we've got Wow. All right, the meeting machine gun here. Um do we need any firepower? We need firepower. One, two, three, four, five, six. We knew we would, we would need all the units up over there. So this unit will go two, three, and four to see if he could generate some defensive fire from the Japanese player because these guys haven't moved yet. I don't think the Japanese will fire here because if these guys move behind them, they'll be better defended. Uh, if these guys break behind them, they'll be less of a problem. I don't really care if this guy, it's unlikely he's going to get a morale check. So we're not going to fire on that unit there. Um, if another unit moves in there, we may fire on the stack. So um, the meeting machine gun is going to CX. He's going to have six movement factors available to him. Um, which means, uh, but only two portage points, which means he's going to lose movement factor because the meeting machine gun is just a little heavy, but it doesn't matter. He's going to move one, two, three, four, five, and get up there with the leader. This unit's going to uh, assault move here. Leader will move two, three in that location there to bolster the front. And at this point, these units are kind of expendable. If we go one to one against these guys, that's fine. That means the Japanese pretty much just have to bust ass across the bridge, which means the Americans have to cut off the route to the bridge. So we're going to go, um, Two, four. This unit will here will go two, four. No longer CX. And we'll just put the uh, CX across the road. Two, four, no longer CX. Two, four. 
two, four, we might get some mortar shots on us. He's going to, um, he's going to assault move right here. We need to keep our concealments for right now. Two, four, yeah, he hits good there anyway. Two, four, six. So we're fine. Uh, this one unit you know, over here, um, he, I think he'll actually try, uh, go over here. Two, attempt recovery of the support weapon, which is going to be a plus two, I believe, in jungle. So four is a six, no effect. Three, and he also dropped smoke on his own location because he got nothing else to do. Six, so he ends his movement. So that's <clears throat> practice smoke placement. He failed miserably. Uh, that would give us six firepower. Uh, which is a will be another column. You never know when that other column helps, and you know whatever. So it looks grim for the Japanese. So now that the Americans have ended movement, the Japanese will uh, fire on U six. A will fire on U six. Rolls a nine. B will fire on U six as well. Oops. And they roll another nine. Not going to matter. They're not going to hit anything, which goes there anyway. Let me drop those down a little bit. All right. And so the, the other Japanese units over here, take a look from their perspective. They see units behind them. Uh, will I need concealment? I think we can go over here. Uh, the Americans do have an advanced phase. If they fire, they can assault move and be here. They might have an advanced. So we can... Cause non concealments from there. We're going to go ahead and fire at this American unit. We're going to fire 16 firepower. The MMG and the 447. 16 plus 1 against the unit in R4. We need to break him, weaken that side up so that we don't get completely crushed. Oops, it rolls right out. Let's try it again. Okay, we roll a five with a one with the rate of fire. Um, 16 plus five, six is a two morale check. That's actually a decent roll. The American rolls an eight, so he breaks. Uh, damn here. Uh, fired up with another four firepower machine or eight firepower machine gun shot. With that rate of fire, rolls a 10, no effect. And then, um, right now the, the Marines can go one-on-one -on -one and lose. Hmm. If we fire, we'll lose concealment. They may not lose concealment. It's only going to be a four firepower plus two. We're not going to bother with that shot, to be honest with you. Um, actually it's a six plus two. No, those are too low. If we go here, we can actually combine our fire. So we'll just kind of maybe back up. So, um, that's it for the Japanese defensive fire phase, the American advanced fire phase. Will we jump into close combat? They have an advantage. <clears throat> Huh. Advanced fire phase. They can't combine, so they're going to have to fire individually at half firepower plus two. Uh, not good. I think we're going to try just to go to close combat. Unfortunately. But we do have our concealment, and that would get us support weapons up there farther. Not the best. This unit can actually fire into close combat. That guy might be eliminated. Not the best choice. Again, because if I fire this unit here, that's going to be essentially um, uh, five, half the advanced fire doubled, and then half for this. So it's two and a half, three, four. That's going to be a four up two shot. That's not going to be very good. I need a five for a pin to ask check. Oh. But if he does get pinned, if we don't lose concealment, we don't advance. 
if we do lose concealment or if they could possibly get pinned that we do advance and they can't they can't even if they ambush it's not going to be hand to hand so we'll do that we'll roll for the five um we're going to try the mortar guy first against this unit over here four plus two if we roll a five it'll be a pentashek 11 that'll be nothing and then um the medium machine gun will do the same thing against this unit here because i don't want to go here and get blasted by this bastard so the medium machine gun will go there oh, shit all right let's go for it all right we do roll a five interesting so that is a pin task check on the uh or chart so he does lose his concealment interesting all right so he just rolls a seven Fantastic, check and he rolls a five so he's okay um he'll still have a minus one but the chance of that pin i think uh outweighs because that means he can't it will take away his hand-to-hand -hand combat in case we scrub our ambush roll right so the first round is no hand-to-hand -hand combat and we'll have a essentially it'll be even and then after that i think he, he has a slight advantage maybe so um and at this point both of us can jump in there and and fire upon him so that'd be a 10 to 4 2 to 1 um he won't he might get hand to hand um we may have to risk that i'm not sure if i want to risk that i'll have to, I'll have to delve on that later. so it's advanced fire route phase Oh, you know what we're going to do? Technically, again, I think we screwed this one up on the last one. Technically, the closest cover is Q4 because that movement is only one movement factor. But... Yeah, there's going to be four guys over there plus a leader. I could technically route him over here and then he could rally them in the American turn and they could bust ass over here. Two, four, six. Oh, he's still CX. This guy's CX. I'll just put that on him. Two, four, one, two, three, four, five, two, four, six, advance. Uh, we'll just keep them up front. We'll be fine. We'll just go back one. Again, this is the closest cover. That's the only spot that he can go to. And then he can continue from there. So he can go one, two, three, four, five. If he wanted to, or one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, five. Technically, he can go one, two, three, four, five, and then die. But he's just going to go to the nine minus one. That's what, or the eight minus one now. He's going to rally. He'll rally by the time the next, next turn comes up. Unless the Japanese want to counterattack, which possible, which is possible, which is possible, we're gonna to have to move the five five eight up. All right. So route advance phase. Um, let's move the mortar up in there, and then um, we're gonna move this unit here. And this unit's going to remain where he is. Advance these units up to T2. Uh, we can try to recover that next turn. And these units here. Uh, I don't think I want to move both of them there. The leader's coming. Actually, we're going to advance both these units into these locations because the leader's coming uh they can break and route back this way and uh they should be fine in case anything happens so uh they've reached the road behind the japanese let's see what the japanese do all right close combat phase we have an ambush here jungle japanese and raider so it's going to be the Japanese is going to be a plus one or a net plus one to its advantage. 
So the Americans add one to the die roll. Americans roll a four. Japanese roll a three. No ambush. Wow, don't really not really a lot of ambush in this one here. So the Americans have a one to one, and the Japanese have a one to two minus one. Essentially a one to one. So American roll one to one. We roll a six. Uh, barely missed. Japanese. Ooh, roll 12. Not good. Not good. All right, so that's a melee. All right, and that will be hand-to-hand -hand next turn. Um, that one, the Japanese have to win. But that's it. So let's go. That's it for the... So it's Japanese turn four. And uh, rallies. We just have a rally for the American here. Need like a five. I rolled a six. Do we get the six? Four, five, six. Yeah, he rolls. Six is what we needed. Four for the unit for DM plus one jungle minus one leadership modifier. He's up and going. Again, see? You move him forward, gets blasted, comes back, rallies. American morale. Can't beat it. Can't beat it. Join it. So, uh, we got a recovery die roll up at the top. Plus a thousand. He rolls a one. Oh. He finds that thing. Oh, here it is. It's sticking it under the, all the dead Japanese bodies. Plus eight minus one leader. Okay, remember, we still have to have a leader across. Doesn't matter how many squads we have. So Japanese turn, prep fire. Uh, we're going to have some prep fire. I think we need to beat the shit out of these guys here. Need to beat the shit out of these guys. And then let's try our mortars here to see if our mortars can do anything here. If they if they have some good damage, we can it eliminate those units. Yeah, so that's what we need to do. Again, order of fire. It's very important. What the hell are you talking about, Stu? Come on, move. All right, order fire. So let's look at the Japanese perspective. We got our mortars here, right? Americans have come up to the front, up there. Mortars ready to deal out some hell, hellfire, and this is what they're there for. Again, we've only had a couple of ones that are acquired. So uh, we could fire on this unit, which would be a, probably a good shot because that'll be 12 firepower. And then we could also reinforce the melee over here if necessary. 12 firepower here. Try and break that unit plus two. And if we don't break it, we're going to get fried. Um, also, um, we could possibly just move into that unit. But if these mortars, if you fire this unit first on this unit, for just because you're so excited to fire an eight charter, eight plus one, on that unit right there, then you're missing the whole point of strategizing your shots. You have to know what this unit can do. Yes, it can engage here. Yes, it can move here. It can move here, here. But these units back here can fire upon our units over here. Break either one. If one, if he breaks, he has to move this way to try and kill it. Therefore, he has to fire and stop that unit. Does it matter? If this unit fires on that Japanese unit. No. We're going to send the squad. If that's the case, we're going to send the squad. Let's say he gets shot here. He breaks. So he red stripes. Shots here, breaks again. And then he's free to go right here. It's a 237. This unit's eliminated. If he breaks. Technically, he, no, he can't even route that direction because they'd be getting closer to our enemy units down here. So that unit would be eliminated. So that's what we're going to wait for. And I think these guys have concealment. Don't they have concealment? Uh, I thought they had concealment. But anyway, first things first, mortar fire. So we're only going to fire one mortar first in case we get ready to fire. 
And if we get ready to fire, we'll just continue to pound them. So we'll fire A. One hindrance, plus two concealed. So it's a base seven, six, five, four. We need a five to hit. Let's see what happens. Conceal sucks. And we roll a four with no rate of fire. So we do obtain a hit. Let's see the result. That's a two minus one. We roll a seven, which means it's going to be a six pin task check, which means the concealment's gone. Pin task check on the unit with no rate of fire. Here's the American pin. He rolls an eight. He's fine. This will flip. And then the other mortar will go ahead and fire as well. And he will fire at the same location. Interesting. Interestingly enough, actually, we should fire at V5. Interestingly enough, if we break this unit, uh, yeah, he'd have to route the V5, I guess. Because that would be close as an MF. All right. So the other mortar will fire. The leader doesn't need to direct anything. And uh, this way, the plus two for being concealed doesn't apply because he just lost his concealment. So second mortar will fire. Where's our prep fire? All right. Needs, a, needs an eight. I said roll in. Let's go. Eight. I roll an eight, so it's a hit. Two minus one. I roll a nine, which sucks ass. So that's going to be an eight, which is two off of it. So mortars show up. They don't do anything. Next time we'll probably just smoke. Actually, probably should have smoked them. We'll probably smoke them next turn. Uh, they might be able to just come across and kick our ass, to be honest with you. So next time we probably smoke them. Uh, smoke the living daylights out of them. That way our unit's going to approach them. Interesting. Okay. All right. So uh, that was their prep fire. So this unit will... Hmm. Got salt move advance phase. Those guys are coming hard and fast. We're going to have lots of Americans killing us. All right, I think Goto is going to... We just need to kill those leaders. We need these leaders dead. He needs to die. He has four Americans in front of him. He's concealed. That's going to only be an eight. This will be an eight E, a six even chart in the advanced fire phase. All right. Uh, six even in the advanced fire phase. If we assault move, be one. Uh, so if we assault move into T5, then we're going to take a six shot, but we don't have to deal with the concealment, which pretty much is the exact same shot over here. But if he breaks, he has to go that way and not within the field of fire. If he breaks, it really doesn't change the American situation at all. So what, that's what we'll do. We're going to assault move here. Even though the shot is slightly less than this one here, actually it's going to be the exact same because this would be a plus one. This would be an even but he will get defensive fire. So the American will, uh, he's just going to assault move there. Uh, actually let's, let's fire this other unit. The assault moves advanced phase. Yeah, we can do that. We're just going to assault move here. And then this unit is going to assault move as well. Hmm, unfortunately, he'll get, he'll get a good shot. Now he's going to stay here. He's going to fire. 
That's probably an error. But if I break this unit and this unit dies, he has two units against two units. I can kill one leader. He has one leader left. I think I'll take that chance. Because if I move back to here and then move to here in the advance phase, if the Americans move up to T5, S6, and they can combine a fire group on me, I really don't want the American fire group to occur. I can deal with an A plus two shot. That's not a bad shot. And considering he's Japanese, we're going to go six, and we could always assault move back here anyway. We're going to go a 12 firepower plus two. I roll seven, that's a nine, which is a morale check. It's actually a result. And he rolls a seven. That was very close. I saw six come out of that thing. So uh, no effect there. Here's the prep far. All right. So he prepped, he moved. We're just going to assault move him back. Yeah, yeah, it's out of order, but you got three units. Not that big a deal. Um, assault moves back. He will defensive fire. On the one movement factor, uh, so then he could final fire later on. So he essentially gets two shots. That's eight firepower plus two on the first shot. So do you see how that do you see how that works? So we've got this unit here. If he doesn't fire at all, because oh he's getting full modifiers because the assault moved, and I'm only getting one shot anyway. I'm not going to fire until the defensive fire phase. Well, since you're not going to get any shots anyway. Fire now, because in the defensive fire phase, you get one shot. Fire now at the same effect at eight firepower plus two, and then you'll be first fired. You can't fire again because he's only fire, moved one movement factor. And then you simply fire again in the defensive fire phase because you have an, an enemy adjacent to you at four plus two. So you get two free. You get you get a free shot out of it. Take the free shot. This is what you need to understand. You're getting a free shot out of this. It's going to be 8 plus 2. Rolls a 10. No effect. Nothing happens. Now we go to the defensive fire phase. He'll fire adjacent because no other units are moving. That's going to be a 4 plus 2. Another 11. So he's finaled. No big deal. These Americans over here, we're going to fire um, 9, 16 firepower plus 2. Jesus. Rolls a 7, it's a 9 on the 16, which is a 1 morale check. A Japanese unit rolls a 9. And they start doodling. Let me go ahead and rotate some of these guys. I think we can go with this um, direction. So he, he first fired. He final fired, technically. And this unit's, this unit's going to fire as well. So we're going to fire him as well. That's going to be eight firepower plus two. Again, do it a little Japanese down so he's got nothing left. Uh, four, which cowers to the six chart, which means it's a six on the six chart. One morale check. And he rolls an eight, which again takes away that firepower. So he gets down, step down to a 237. Interesting. Okay. That may make the decision for the Japanese better. We're probably just going to jump into close combat, probably right here to block the movement. Because he's going to be pretty much worthless with the LMG. Hopefully we can get a... If we can get both these close combats, that would be really critical. At least two more units on that side. That's going to make it tight. All right. Uh, advanced fire for the Japanese. We're going to do that here. We're going to fire the crew and the squad at six firepower with a minus one leader with plus one terrain because now it's light jungle because it's on the perimeter. So it's a six plus one. Or six even, rather. Not a bad shot. Oh, seven on the six chart is a normal morale check. This guy breaks. That'd be good. And he does break. Just a barely a nine. That makes it interesting. Okay, he breaks. 
DM this guy here. All right, he can get away. It's not a big deal. But the Japanese can then, like, go to U5. Um, yeah, this, cause this is really crazy. All right, so that's it for the advanced fire for the Japanese player turn. We'll remove the prep fires. Here. Final fire, final fire. There. Not a lot of residual fire action going on. All right. So uh advanced phase. I think we'll keep we'll keep these guys here to keep those acquisitions pounding on that location. Uh route phase, this guy's got a route. Uh two four six. Do we really need to go that far back? Two four six. We're just gonna go to V4. Um Two. We're gonna go two four because the leader can go two four six. Um, actually, he's eight zero. Doesn't matter. So we're gonna go two four, two four six back there, because the leader's probably doesn't need to be in the front line, regardless. So, um, advance phase. This unit, um, to be honest with you, hmm, I'm not sure we want to take the LMG. This is a case because the jungle is difficult to recover. We just drop the LMG and move here. And he moves in here to attempt the LM to pick up the LMG. He's just burning movement points, movement factors. Uh, we're probably not going to come out of this thing alive. I mean, technically we can get a rate of fire with a shot. So, um, but if we take that in there, he can pick it up. This way we'll let him move. So we're going to go in there without the LMG. We're going to drop it. And then these guys... These guys will go here. Uh, I think we could take that six plus two shot. Not a big deal. And we've got this location here as well. So we've got an ambush here and a close combat here, which is going to be hand to hand. I'm not sure if that's a difference. Oh, hey. Um, so ambush here. Japanese jungle cancel. Raiders a minus one. Uh, so the Raiders are net minus one. Let's roll it away. So the Raider rolls a four. Japanese rolls a five. No ambush. But the Japanese are first line. He is unpinned. And he can make it a hand-to-hand. -hand. So that's a one-to-three, which means a one-to-four. Hand-to-hand -hand makes it a five. Minus one for Japanese makes it a six for casualty reduction. And he rolls a six, and so he is CR'd. And then um, the ja the American back is going to be a two to one. No modifiers, hand to hand, needs a nine. He rolls a six, eliminates the unit. All right. So we did whittle him down a little bit. Mm, one to one is probably not what we want at. Over here again, hand-to-hand -hand combat, one to two minus one. For the Japanese, that's going to be a seven for a casualty reduction. He rolls a 12, no effect. The American, one to one, no rolls. He needs a seven. And he rolls a seven for a CR. So this one is casualty reduced. Japanese are not doing very good in their close combat. So... I'll reduce the size of this unit because it's way too big. All right, so that is a done deal over there. They could still win that close combat. Uh, Japanese are looking pretty slim. But again, we still need those leaders across. All right, so concealment gains, we have none. And then we go, we'll be going on. American turn five. He has three movement phases to get across the bridge. 
So let's see what happens with the Americans on turn five. All right, guys, let's go. Let's do it. This is American turn five. And we have one, two, three turns to get over. So let's look at the situation for the Americans. Stop and pause right here. It looks really good for the Americans. So the next thing we have to note is which leader do we need to get off? If he physically just blocks this with his body, that might be a problem. So we have to eliminate this units. And that's one thing I should have thought of the Japanese. If you just block that area with your bodies, I can throw these bodies back up there. And he can't even get across, which I may have to do because I'm running out of bodies of the Japanese. I have this stack and that's it. Um, so this guy needs to go one, two, three advance. And so he can go over two turns. One, two, two, four, six advance. And he can go over in two turns as well. So there's only a one turn gap for the Japanese. <clears throat> this is looking pretty ugly to be honest with you. If we, if we get a kill here on this side over here for the Japanese, you know, we don't even need the mortar anymore to be honest with you because there's no Japanese left. We could see how it goes. If the Japanese can destroy the American here, which that'll really pigeonhole this area here. Um, and if our leaders break, they cannot route to this side of the river. So the leaders being good order, not breaking when those mortar shots go off is huge. So it means we need to move these guys up to pressure these guys and break these mortar units down here. These guys are important on this side to pressure these units here to break or because we have to, oh yeah, they need to break. So they're half squads. So they can break and then stop those shots from coming. But they do have eight morale, which is breakable because we have lots of firepower. Uh, don't think they'll be able to survive, but let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Um, all right, American rally phase. We have one self rally here. That will be a four, I believe. What do you guys think? You think it's a four? Let's try four. How about a nine? That's not going to happen. So that DM is gone. We'll put that over there. Uh, no other rally. Uh, nothing here. Prep fire. No prep fun. Can we prep fire here? That's the question. Hmm. The Americans got to play this. Oh, oh, we got a unit up here. That's right. Can we prep fire there? And not get our asses kicked is the question. This unit is concealed. He will lose his counter exhaustion at the beginning of the movement phase. Prep fire into this location. See, right now, we can prep fire here to break this unit. Because if he breaks, he dies. If he doesn't break, he's at a one to four, and he's still hand to hand. So that's still a, a six for a kill. And um, that's something that we could take advantage of. If we break this unit, which he will break more often than we will, then um, he will die in close combat and we'll have our other unit up and running. Otherwise, that's going to be about an even shot to kill each other. I'm a two to one. That's a nine. I think I'll take it. I think I'll just take the chance. I'm just going to bypass this son of a bitch. And I'm going to take that melee chance. It's a big chance. And if he does kill him and the leader moves up, he might have an opportunity on the leader. Doubtful. But we're going to go with that. We're going to take, we're going to have trust in our raider units over there to kick his ass. And then, um, and then be done with the Japanese on that side. So, uh, prep fire. The question is. Should I make my way across or just try and prep fire against this unit with an eight firepower plus two? <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's try the let's try the eight firepower plus two. We got a leader coming up the backside. If we if he breaks us in defensive fire, we simply route back to V3. The leader simply moves there, and these guys move up into position 
to point blank him next turn. And these guys will be moving up as well. So he's going to be up shit creek. Uh, so we're going to take that 8 plus 2 shot. Roll an 8 on the 8. 8 plus 2 is a 10. That's a miss. Uh, maybe we won't take the 8 plus 2 shot. But uh, so he's prepped. That's our only prep fire. Now we we'll get a movement phase. Uh, let's move these dudes up here. CX we're just going to put over there. So we're going to go 2, 4. Let's move this five five eight first. We're gonna go two four here. Will we need to fire upon that unit? As a Japanese player, do we need to fire upon that unit? These guys could come down the road and just run off the map. One, two, three, four. We're not going to fire on him uh, quite yet. Uh, these guys are going to go two, four. And that location there. Huh. Maybe we should move him up two, four here anyway. Yeah, 2-4 anyway. We could block that guy in. He's going to go 2-4. Leader's going to move over here. Don't need to be with the other units. He doesn't serve any purpose. You rally that unit. We could defensive fire here uh, later on. This is still plus one, but we still want to deal with this unit, with this problem here of this freeway. Freeway of love. So we've got three units to move. CX is gone over here. Let's see. So if the 238 moves here and breaks, he can still route to this location because it's not getting closer to the Japanese unit. He can go two, four, six. So we're gonna run the 238. We're gonna go one, two, <clears throat> We're going to go three here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fire the minus two mortar at that location. I believe we're going to fire the minus two mortar, which is mortar a here. Possible first fire. Ready to fire two. And let's go. Uh, one and six. Ready to fire. Maintain. That's it will be a hit with rate. It's only one movement factor used. It'll be a two minus one. A roll to six makes it a five. One morale check. And that will leave how much residual? Not one. But two. Because it went up. So one morale check on the 238. Rules of five, he's fine. One, two, three. He can't fire again, so we're going to go four to the river. <clears throat> and we got ready to fire on the, on the mortar, so we'll leave it there. Boop. Two residual in there, that's better than nothing. The only units to move are these guys over here. Uh, we're going to go two, three, four. When your leader will go one, two. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And this unit will go one, two, three, four to pick up the LMG. Five. We can't ever find it initially. That's terrible. Excuse me. So that's it for him. Defensive fire for the for the Japanese. Sixteen plus 
We do 8 plus 1, 8 plus 2. Let's do a 16 plus 1 on the medium machine gun. 16 plus 1 yields a 4, no rate of fire. So it's a 5 on the 16. Wow. That's a big chart. That's a 3 morale check. That's like a real result. All right. 558, five, 3 morale check, rolls an 8. You will fail. Two broken units. All right. No rate of fire, so that's it for that unit. Uh, mortars, we'll go ahead and fire. Uh, the mortar B will swap to this location over here, still plus one. That would be a six to hit. The acquisition doesn't apply yet. A rolls, a six with a two rate of fire. My acquisition goes down, two minus one on that unit. Roll a six. So that makes it a normal morale check for the American. Hmm, this might get interesting. Holy shit. That's an 11. Hmm. This is getting pretty interesting already. This is getting interesting. Holy shit. There are three broken units on this side now. And only two units can stack in this location because it's dense jungle. Mm, mm, mm. If we lose this close combat over here, this, this shit is hitting the fan. <clears throat> All right. He did get rate of fire on that shot, though. No, he did not get. He rolled a three and a one. No. Three and a one for the results. I think he did get rate of fire on the result. Minus one. And uh, I think he did. Let's fire again. Hopefully it won't make a difference. Uh, Damn it, drop the die. Let's fire again. An eight will hit at two minus one. A six on the two is a pin task check, no effect. So even if I didn't get it right, it didn't matter. The minus two is actually not that big a deal. Uh, this residual is gone. Advanced fire phase. Um, all right, uh, five, five, eight. Will fire, he'll fire everything. He'll fire the uh, his squad himself. Add one plus two for the LMG. So that's an eight firepower plus two shot adjacent. The breakdown is high on that, but we don't really care. Eight plus two, we rolled a six in cower. And that'll be a eight on the six is a pin task check. So we have a nine for the leader. He rolls a six. We have a 10 and an 9. 10 because he's got an increased morale level from the leader and minus 1 for the leadership modifier. So 10 for that. 8 and 9 for the unit below him. 6. Both of those units are fine. So um, that was a decent shot, to be honest with you. And uh, he's broken. He's broken. He can't fire on anyone. He can fire here. That's an eight shot. Let's do the eight plus two here. I'm getting scared. We're going to do eight plus two over here. We're going to take our chances. A five is a seven on the eight chart. Is means it's a one morale check. Let's go with the American unit first. One morale check. This is what we pay you the big bucks. One morale, six, he passes. Japanese unit, if you fail, you will die. An eight for the Japanese unit. Japanese unit is broken, that paid off. So it was either going to be decided for the close combat phase or in the advanced fire phase. <clears throat> so I just ended that shit early. So this will be a good, this will be a good easy free kill. All right. Game's still not over yet. We got. Uh, we still need to get some units over. That's our route phase. We can go two. We're just going to go two. These units are going to 
go to right there. We need the medium up and going. Um, our bar is going. And that's that. Route phase, advanced phase. We're going to come across. We have to, oh, we, we're going to advance down here. Advance right there. We need, if once we destroy these units, man, time is running out. We have two turns. Am I going to botch this? Am I going to botch this as the American guys? Am I going to botch this as the Americans? This guy's not free. That will get some firepower over here, but it doesn't really matter. We still need somebody across the river. Can he just simply bullshit body block us? Japanese has two movement phases left. We can go assault move. Advance phase. Yeah, we need to get up in his grill. We need to move here. And he needs to move here. We can't let him sit here for free. We, we need to be able to fire upon this location. If we move here, I think we instantly lose. Simply because the Japanese won't break. They'll just step reduce. So we have to be able to in incur some firepower upon him. Uh, the 9 minus 2 is... Uh, is the 558 concealed? I don't recall. Shoot. I wish I knew. I think he fired upon somebody. I, um, I don't recall. Hopefully I won't make a mistake. It's actually really critical at this point in the game. But I think the Japanese will assault move anyway. Um, to get out of dodge. They can actually assault move here and just fire the living shit on V6. So either location is good for the Japanese. Um, 20 firepower or 16 firepower is really not that good. Um, we may have to move into V5. Or we may do 16 firepower back at him. If we break the leader, most likely he won't be able to come back to get across. And these guys, if these guys don't rally, we could actually just assault the 8-0 with the 4 4 7. Wow, lots of options still. Don't quit your games, guys. When you get this point, don't say, ah, game's over, I'm going to quit. This is bullshit. No, you're a coward if you do. There's plenty of game left in here. We've got a 558, which this is still in plus two terrain. You step reduce as the, as the, as the Japanese, so you're still going to be viable regardless, if you, even if you fail a morale check. Um, He still needs six points. He's Even if he gets this... This squad here, well, he needs the leader and both of these units across the bridge. This guy's kind of meaningless, to be honest with you. I'm moving him across so he can go harass these sons of bitches over here. This guy's a throwaway. He's going to go here and here and then jump them into close combat to stop the mortar fire. That's what he's doing. He's not there for victory points. <clears throat> these guys are for victory points. And problem is we've got too many of them broken. So two of these guys must get across with the leader. So if the 8-0 gets across, then this guy has value. Simply because there'll be a one point for the leader, one point for this guy, and then two squads is six. Um, this isn't over yet. So uh, let's go over melee over here. It's kind of a moot point. Two to one minus uh, freaking two. And it, um, theoretically, it's still hand-to-hand. -hand. But let me roll anyway. An 8 minus 2, regardless whether it's hand-to-hand -hand or not. The unit is eliminated. No longer a melee. So we got our mortar. Interesting, my strategy is the Japanese. Um, the mortar is probably not even going to come into play very much. Maybe a turn. Because it's at America turn 5 right now. Alright. Japanese... Turn five. We have a rally phase, people. Let's rally this American unit here with a nine. He rolls a nine. Roll the next unit with a five. He rolls an eight. We got one. One of two. DM is gone. 
Um, we didn't find that, did we? That's back over here. He didn't pick it up. You don't get the LMG for free, little bastard. All right, this DM is gone. All right, we've got some uh, pinpoint accuracies over there. So as a Japanese player, we're going to take B, and we're going to fire on this unit over here. Obviously, we have to flip that. Uh, Japanese have no rally. They do have a shot there. Let's take a prep, prep, prep fire shot. More to B. Uh, rolls an eight. That will be a miss. You need a six to hit. Drop acquisition. We're going to keep the acquisition here. <clears throat> Maybe. Oh, you know what? No, it's a better shot. You know, it's a better ploy. Hmm. You know, it's a better ploy. Uh, let me back it up just for informational purposes. Flip. Smoke seven right here. Give me plus three cover. I can assault move in advance phase right here. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to, uh, we're going to, we're going to have this guy fire. Uh, he's already fired. Ask ah, it for educational purposes this is what you should do. Use your, uh, smoke making capability. This is the, this is the time because this guy got limited threat. He's going to be a five plus one. Uh, you're going to use your smoke making capabilities to fire one, two, three hexes. Hence the range of three to 10. We need a smoke seven, uh, plus two for smoke. And that was acquired technically, but I'm not going to worry about it. You roll, you need to roll seven anyway. So, so he rolls an 11. This unit has no smoke. The next one will smoke. Actually at that point he could try white phosphorus, but this other unit will try smoke first. He rolls off the board. Let's try it again. So he rolls an eight, no smoke. Um, let's try white phosphorus. And it will fire dispersed, unfortunately. Unfortunately, it will fire dispersed white phosphorus. It's only gonna give us a plus one. All right, in that case, we'll take our initial shot. We're gonna take a shot over here. That one's gonna miss with no effect. Because he didn't have any smoke, neither one of them fired. The second one, since that none of them have any smoke. Ah, oh, crap. That, that would have helped a lot. That probably would have made the game for the Japanese. They would have been able to go into U6. Alright, so back to the Japanese. Both these guys prep fired. Well, the second one hasn't prep fired yet. Deciding whether to go shoot this little bastard over here or not. Hmm. Send Sergeant Ken to go kill him. Hmm. Let's break units. Uh. Let's break units. Fire over here. Don't care. Need a six to hit. Base seven plus one hindrance. Means a six. Roll seven. Miss. Minus one acquisition. All right. They're prepped. All right. I don't think I want to move this unit simply because this guy's got going to have 12 firepower plus one. Not really looking forward for a one morale check. There are eight morale. That's nine morale. We're going to take it. We're going to... um. We're going to assault move Goto with a medium machine gun and a 228.
So it's up to this unit to fire or not. That would be a 12 plus one. Essentially these units are gonna have a nine and 10 morale. So we're gonna go ahead and fire anyway. Um, yeah, if you have assault moves here, they can't. So that's what this guy's looking for right here. He'd be assault moves here. He's gonna be DM'd anyway, and I could try to kill this unit. Kill the leader. I can jump him in close combat. <clears throat> because I'm gonna be a 347, even if I fail my morale check. They can't combine fire groups, so that's going to be a an 8 plus 2 and a 12 plus 2. So if I move that unit to that location, essentially trying to bait this shot this way, that means the likelihood of this unit making here is higher. And therefore, that means the likelihood of me being able to jump into close combat, although uh, I might be ambushed. But that doesn't matter from the Japanese, because if the Japanese are an attacker in close combat, that's going to be um, uh, minus minus one. They're going to get it hand to hand anyway, and he can only stack with one unit, so it's going to be a one to two uh, minus one. So that's a six. I think that's my best chance to kill a leader. This guy is an eight minus one. I'll get one of two leaders in that shot. The problem is, is that Goto will then be alone. This guy will DM. That will take us to American turn six. He'll be DM'd. <clears throat> essentially, we essentially just have to break the nine minus one at that point, the eight minus one. We have to kill him. We can, uh, we can advance phase over here to get closer to this location. Of course, the Americans can just advance phase into that location at the end of turn six. So we're just going to play it safe. Uh, he's going to fire. He's going to then assault move here. And then he's going to hold his fire simply because of the possibility of killing the, killing the eight zero. He's going to hold his fire. It's probably not the best, best move for the Japanese. Something to think about, though, is taking out an eight zero. Then I could be behind this unit. And then I could possibly come back this way. That's a long shot. What's the threat now against the Japanese? We're going to be looking at a 12 plus 1. Not a great shot that we want to look at. These units will then advance into position. Plus 2. This guy will come over. They'll be surrounded. They won't be able to break them all because they're eight morale units. We have another unit coming over. Excuse me. This unit is DM'd. If I leave the crew here, he's going to be killed in close combat by this unit. So I think we have to stick with him, unfortunately. All right, so he's going to assault move there. Um, he's just going to hold his fire so he could fire 12 firepower plus one. Uh, he didn't need to fire at the big unit here simply because he needed to wait for the 447's action. Uh, he's now dictated what his action is going to be. And it's an assault move. <clears throat> and a 238 will fire on these units over here because it's a priority. Two, three, eight over here would be a two plus one. And it's going to be a one plus one against the leader. Two plus one is a five, makes it a six. Pin task check, no effect versus the leader. Pin task check on both these units kind of, uh, it is relevant. A nine fails, even with increased morale, and a 10 fails. So they can't move closer. They can advance to V8, which actually makes a difference. This unit here will then fire 12 plus 1 on the units in V5. An 8 is 9 is a morale check. Leader must roll a 9. He rolls a 7. 
Now, since the leader exists, this unit has a morale level of nine plus or minus one, makes it him a 10. Rolls a four, this rolls is a eight morale plus or minus one leader, it is a nine. And he rolls an eight. Wow, the leadership makes all the difference in the world. All right, so that was his fire. Uh, American fire from this unit here will be five plus one. Across the way, I roll a six. Uh, be a seven pin task check. Uh, no effect versus the leader. And they're already pinned, so no effect. All right. So uh, that's it for the defensive fire phase, advanced fire phase. Again, we're going to fire four, six. <clears throat> six minus one on this guy. Oh, we're firing against him. Six plus one against the American Marine. Roll seven, eight pin task check. Not really gonna have, no, I actually did will. An eight, he's fine. And then we can still advance on him. That'd be risky as hell. We could advance on him though. Two, four, five, six. They have to be good order. If we advance on him, these units become DM again. We could possibly kill him in close combat. Four, five, six, seven. We could possibly kill him in close combat. We don't necessarily need to block the bridge because he's got one point over. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. They have to remain in good order. If these guys break, he'll have one unit to come over here to try to block us, but we can still get the V, come back to V5 with all those units broken. And the nine minus two must remain in good order. Huh. Because we're going to take a 12 plus 1 shot right in the beginning anyway. We're taking a 12 plus 1. <clears throat> we're taking a 12 plus 1. Huh. I say, um, we go here, we won't do anything to this guy. He just comes behind us and blocks. God, I hate the situation. Don't like it. I want to kill this unit, but I don't want to remain right here. And there's no line of sight for any other location to V6. All right, so be it. We're going to advance here then. I'm gonna block the friggin' road. There's no line of sight from here to here. He's gonna do what he do. And um uh, I'm just gonna sit there and see what happens. We're just gonna bitch block the road. Alright. Uh route. Uh um, technically this guy has to route. We have to back him up at least one hex. And then advance, he advances here. Can't advance. And then gain concealment. No gains. Uh, we're looking at American turn six. All right, rally phase. We've got a, like a 15 up here. A four will easily rally this unit. I'm just going to put this over here, same unit. <clears throat> Excuse me, four. Uh, Self rally this unit. American turn. Five misses. Technically, you need to do the South Rally first, but we're, we're friendly. We're friendlies here. All right, looks like a prep fire coming on. Um, we're going to go with uh, 9, 16, 16 even against these Japanese units there. This is going to be nasty. Jesus. And an 8. No rate of fire. 16, 8 is a 1 morale check leader it rolls a six all right 
So one morale check. His morale level boost cancels everything, but his minus one leadership applies. So we need a nine and an eight. A nine to pin, eight, and an eight to pin. Six. Those guys are fine. Wow. That's what the leadership does for you. So this guy's prep fired. And uh, that's gone as well. Where's our prep fire? These guys have prep fired. Uh, no other prep fire. Let's go to movement phase. We're going to go. Um, we're going to go two, three, and we're going to go four. I don't think the Japanese can afford to fire here because the Americans might approach these areas over here. The Japanese can't afford to fire on the 238. I'm not gonna waste that shot. It doesn't matter. If he jumps us in close combat, we have the advantage because we're concealed. And um, he might do that anyway, just to pin us down. Uh, that's probably his best bet, to be honest. So we're gonna go with that assumption that he's gonna try and jump us in close combat. Otherwise, it's a two, two even shot. It's not, actually not that bad. So uh, let's go with some more American movement. Obviously, the leader's just gonna, simply going to move over here, or does he? We're going to leave the meter leader there for, for last. These guys have prep fired. <clears throat> We're going to drop smoke into T6 from S6. Um, yeah. Smoke attempt placement. Rolls a four, no effect. He can be fired upon. Hmm, can't get through there. Uh, got a minus one, and he's going to move forward. Might as well fire on him. So if he goes up here, we don't have an advanced fire shot. Um, because we have the minus one. We'll fire A at him. I roll a one and a four, which is a five. Rate of fire that will hit. Flip. Two minus one on the unit. Uh, nine minus does eight. No effect. He's expended two movement factors to try to drop there. Um, we're going to fire again. And two and a three. Another hit. Another rate of fire. Now we just need a five on the result. On the, uh, six on the result. Minus one means a normal morale check. Hey, that's better than nothing. Oops, rolled it off. Let's roll the normal morale check again. And more, normal morale check is a six, so he's fine. So lots of shooting, lots of firing, and then he'll go to here. Should we fire upon that for the HMG? That's a, that's a lot of firepower. He's got three units coming this direction. That can't be a fire group there. He's already fired. The threat from this unit is much less than the threat from the units that are coming up on us. Um, we're not going to fire at this point. All right, so the mortar is going to go two and... We may fire a mortar over there. And I don't think that's that, that big a deal at this point. We need to protect his flank over here and this guy right here. So I think we're good to go. And then he's going to go three. <clears throat> I don't know if I could skip the two minus two from the school, from the unit firing open. No, uh, two minus one. Is a good shot. Two minus two. I need to roll six. I'm not going to worry about that shot right now because our leader is here. We have eight morale. He's going to have four firepower plus zero. We're going to have to wait. I think we have to be patient and wait to see what the Americans do on this side. So now those guys have moved. So now the Americans have three squads. I think we need to move the medium here to generate lots of firepower in case he wants to go across the road. So the medium's plan is to move here, whether he assault moves in advanced phases. Uh, we, we don't like our face getting bashed in. 
<clears throat> but if we don't move up there, he's going to fire. He may fire on the leader to break the leader. So I think um, I think the assault move here is an obvious one, or maybe the assault move into v5. Again, we can we could do fire groups. We're going to move assault move here. So should we fire on him? If he goes two four. We're going to have 16 plus 1. This will be a 16 minus 1. So we're going to wait, actually. He's going to go 2 and 4. And at this point, I think we're going to fire uh, 16. 8, 12. That would be a 12. We fire an eight minus one. Let's fire an eight minus one. Fire the medium machine gun led by the leader. This way, if if this unit does chooses not to move up there in case this guy breaks, then we'll have four, which will double to eight in the defensive fire phase, plus the medium machine gun could subsequent first fire an adjacent unit, which would be the leader. So the, I, we could have a 12 plus one against the leader. <clears throat> so just to break him so we're going to fire um an eight minus one non-assault movement negates the jungle minus one leader eight minus one with a snake eyes is the worst thing the americans would want holy shit uh well he has rate of fire so we'll keep rate of fire and that guy is gone huh Huh. Well, that sucks. All right, in that case, I think we have to assault move here. We can't go into V5. Because he hasn't, technically he hasn't even fired yet. And we're going to have to wait. We have to go here to pound this guy for a turn or two. What turn is it now? America, Jesus, America turn six. Advance and seven. I think we have to bite the bullet, guys. We're going to have to eat that shot. We're going to have to eat the shot. Man, that's depressing. All right, let's um, let's do exactly the same thing. Eight minus one, uh, because we could fire twelve, no modifiers over here. Twelve plus one over here. Uh, this is getting down to nitty gritty here. We may have to jump in close combat. All right, eight minus one. We roll an eight. That's a seven on the eight, which is a one morale check. Uh, no easy task. That's a seven. He rolls an eleven. Uh, best thing about it is at least the uh, the Japanese were not pursuing these broken units. He's not leaving that position. And we could route here and go over there. So now we simply just assault move over here. That's it for the American movement. He uh, He did first fire. So... <clears throat> This is what it looks like on the on that side of the town. We do have some mortars to go, don't we? Oh shit. We still have mortars. Alright, let's fire the mortars first. Before this unit decides what to fire. Why do we want to do that? Because if the mortar that guy's already broken. Not a threat. If we break him, not a threat, which leaves this unit two targets to fire at. One of them hasn't fired on him yet, and the other one's already fired. Not a threat. But this guy's a leader. And then the mortars could possibly fire here, but that's that's a low priority target because the minus one applies over here. You'll get a better result, and it will defend our Japanese units in the middle. So, mortars have to fire first here. It's important to fire the mortars first. Uh, this might be the last turn for the mortars because this guy... May end up in close combat with him. 
And with the way that close combats have been going, they haven't been resolved swiftly. So Mortar A will go ahead and fire here at that unit. Oops, shit. Drop the die. Fire at that unit there. Roll a six. That will be a hit. No rate of fire. Uh, barely a hit because it's a seven plus one hindrance and U8. Two minus one. We roll a 10. That will be no effect. Second mortar will fire at the same location. Oops. All right. Need a six. Roll an eight. Miss. No effect. That's it for those guys. Now these guys get the fire. This is going to be a eight plus one against those guys. Doesn't matter. We're going to, we're going to try and break the leader, I think. If we break the leader, he only has one other guy to come across. And that means he has to move fully in the last movement phase. He has to jump in close combat right now. We're going to break the leader. The leader's got to be in close combat. So we're going to fire eight firepower from the squad. And then we're going to fire the medium machine gun. The leader may not participate because he already created a fire group with that unit. So it's going to be a 12 firepower plus two. Not a bad shot. We roll a four. Ugh, six. That is a two morale check. This is no easy task. The leader is going to be eight morale. He rolls a nine and he breaks. The squad is a six. He needs a six and he rolls a six. The squad is pinned. So that means... One, two, three. It's still possible that the leader can go. The leader has to route. This unit is prep fired. This unit is broken. NDM. A good shot. Japanese. He's final fired. Oh, that's it for the Japanese. Let's go with advanced fire for the Americans. Um, we can actually shred him if we get some decent morale checks. Let's start with this uh with the six fire eight firepower up here. We're gonna have a two firepower for the LMG. And we have five plus one for the American unit. So it's going to be eight firepower plus one. Good chart. That is a good chart. I roll a nine, makes it a 10, which falls off the chart. We have to fire this unit here. Uh, he has to fire six firepower plus one. Seven, eight is a pin task check. That is a huge difference. Leader. Rolls an eight. He is fine. Squad or crew thing. He pins. First line unit. Rolls a, an eight, which is okay for him because it makes it. So that unit is pinned. The other units are not. Okay, which actually hurts the, the Japanese in close combat. We may just have to jam these guys. We may just have to jam them, people. I don't think we have a choice. We've only got four good order units. Three of these guys got to get across with the leader. I think we have to... <clears throat> yeah, we got to jam them. We got to kill them all. We have no choice. I don't really think we have a choice. I think we kind of botched it. I'm not sure what happened. But I think we got to jam them. All right, that's all advanced fire route phase. He has to route the closest location, which is right there for one. Technically, he can go one, two, three, but that would make, put him too, too slow back on the trail because he's wounded. He needs to go one, two, three, and then advance. He could possibly rally. Uh, advance phase, get rid of the prep. He's pinned, so he can't go into the, he can't go into the, the mix. He has to route. We can route back here because now we still have two squads. Doesn't exceed the stacking capacities. And then... 10 to 7. We have to go in there because, because we, can't, we can't break him twice. This guy's... All this unit has to do is sit there. Or he just moves back here and no one can see him. We have to go in there. We have no other choice. Uh, he goes and he goes. 
and the mortar boy. The mortar boy might as well go because he's probably need well, might maybe need to fire into close combat. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. I get a two even shot over here. We'll take that shot. Two even ten. No effect. No worries. Should we jump into close combat here? Um, he's one point. He might make a difference with the eight zero leader now. To be honest with you, he might need to survive. We're going to run him away. He might need to survive. Now that our nine minus one is out, he's worth two points. This leader is worth one. That means two, three, four, five, six, and we can win as the Americans. All right, let's uh, figure out what the hell is going on in this close combat. All right, we have we have Raider. Let's write this shit down because this is going to be calculus. Right here, we have Raider units. Minus one die roll modifier for being a Raider. All right. And that's it. Okay. Japanese is American. American. All right. These are Japanese modifiers. We've got a pin. Plus one. Actually, Americans plus one jungle as well. Uh, we've got first line unit, which is not pinned. Minus one. Japanese leader. Minus one. All right. So these cancel for the Americans here. This plus one cancels that minus one. The Japanese have a net minus one for ambush. Oh. All right. Let's see what happens. Uh, net minus one for ambush. Oh, they both roll sixes, so it makes no difference. There is no ambush. There is no hand-to-hand -hand close combat. <clears throat> the Americans might have a chance here. So, this unit's pinned. He's going to be half firepower. The leader will probably stack three, ten, three to one, four to one. He goes here, that'll be three to one. These guys will be two to one. It's be two to one against that guy anyway, or four to one against this guy. Um, does that matter in terms of defense? Well, the American, does the American need to kill all of them this turn? He'll have the Japanese close combat, which will be hand to hand. Which is fine, because uh, if we kill one, we need to kill the 447. So in that case, the 9 minus 1 will not stack the 447. He'll stack with a 2 2 uh, two, two eight in defending. Because we need to kill the 447 anyway. Because that'll get rid of the minus 1, the Japanese in close combat. And um, for next round... And when he goes hand to hand, that'll minimize his, his value there. So uh, that's the way we're going to stack it. Again, remember, I'm looking for two close combat phases to resolve this. Right? We can get a two to one against this unit. Right? Whether or not the leader stacked with him, we're getting a two to one against the unit. So there's no point for the Japanese leader to stack with this unit because it'll be two to one. If he stacks with this unit over here, he could, of course, attack these units at 3 to 1, right? He could attack them at 3 to 1, which is better than 2 to 1 by a factor of 1. But if he kills the leader, this unit's still going to have minus 1 in close combat for next turn anyway. So it'll be hand-to-hand -hand at that point, and he'll be first line, which is a minus 1. So I bet that would be a 1 to 3, which is a 1 to 4 minus one which means he needs a five to kill them both so it doesn't really if you put him here it's going to be the same result either way 
Um, so it's best for the leader not to defend with the 447. Now, of course, the 558 is going to attack everybody, but I'd rather take the 2 to 1 against the, the unit that's going to give the enemies a minus 1 next turn. By Goto coming up here, he preserves a minus 1 from his die roll modifier, dice roll modifier. So either way, next turn, if the if the if the Americans don't kill everybody, which they're not going to, then you're going to have another close combat. So next turn's close combat is going to be huge. So we need a two to one here for the Americans. And they roll an eight. That is no effect. That's going to be bad. So now we have a one, two, six to ten. It's a one to two. Minus one for the Japanese. The Japanese roll is seven, which is no effect. So this is in a melee. That is going to be crazy, crazy interesting. Okay. That is a crazy melee. Pin comes off. Concealment gain, uh, nothing, nothing, nothing whatsoever. Let's just zoom in. I wish I could get those guys. See if I can get, that's a little better. Zoom in there. Mm. Guys, 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 this is getting crazy. All right. So let's go to Japanese player up turn six. This is the Japanese last turn to move. Uh, which makes it interesting. So, as the Japanese player, what do you see here? One, this cl close combat has to be annihilated. It's going to be a hand-to-hand -hand close combat. Um, uh, these Americans are going to fire into it anyway. Eesh, maybe, maybe they can't. They actually can't afford to fire into it. Um, because if these guys break, then the game is automatically over. But what do you see down here? Maybe I should have moved this guy somewhere. Again, this is what you have to think about instead of just randomly advance phasing back. His advance phase here would have been far more effective. And why is that? Because now these units here can simply move to W7 and block. This 558 may have to fire upon those units when they're doing that one but they, they only have to go one two three and then go here and then the other units could do the exact same thing one two three and go there as well just to block that that location because firing on this unit mm, yeah it has some effect and firing here shooting here is going to be a four uh, or minus one if they non assault move. They could simply assault move into V8 and then go to V7. That's not the best move, but well, at least we'll get point blank shots on units in V6. Um, with this, uh, that might be our best bet considering our mortars haven't been that effective against eight morale units. Uh, we could fire into the melee. Oh, the pin's gone. Because the melee, our unit's got nine, and everybody else has like 8,000 morale. Our morale is actually higher than the Americans into the melee. Because he's going to have a 10. Now he has to go one-to-one. -one. He has to be a one-to-one. -one. He needs a six for a kill. I need a... I'm at one to two. I need a seven for a kill. So what the Japanese are going to do here, prep fire. I really don't think prep firing against this unit does anything. If he breaks, well, first of all, let's rally these units. My bad. Nine, nine rallies and a five. Doesn't matter. He'll rally next turn. One unit rallies, the other guy will rally next turn. And because it's a Japanese player turn anyway. 
And so that guy can't do anything in mortars. We have to get the V7 to see the hex. Salt move advance phase. Yep, that's what we're going to do. <clears throat> we're not going to fire, we're just going to move. And we're going to assault move here with everybody. And then what that will do is it cause this unit to first fire at four, four even. There was a five on the four chart, which is a one morale check. Hmm, interesting. Um, it is a pin task check against the leader since he's half. So he's got a pin task check for the leader. The leader makes it with a four, which means these guys, uh, uh, morale check are eights. We got an eight, which rolls a nine. The other guy rolls a nine. Are you kidding me? Wow. Huh. All right. Well, again, the high firepower columns don't bust units up. The four firepower columns do. That is amazing. All right. We'll just flip him over. All right. Well, in that case, since the 558 doesn't want to fire over there, we'll try to kill these units. Uh, well, actually, we're going to mantle the mortar because we use that as one of our support weapons like we discussed in the strategy. We finally get that thing up. Let me find that damn thing. All right, there we go. We found the mortar. We mantled it. Uh, everybody's in range over there. But uh, we'll fire the firepower of the, of the squad. It's going to be a 4 plus 1 on the defensive fire. Interesting. He rolls a four cowers to a two, makes it a five, which is another normal morale check. Interesting. Leader. Leader rolls a nine, which is he does not pin. But these other guys need to roll morale checks of eights. Let's go to the one on the left first. He rolls a five. The next unit rolls a seven, so they're fine. Both of these are gone. I'm just going to put them over here. So, um, and he's first fired. Interesting. Interesting development. I thought this, damn. Okay. He's first fired. That's it for the Japanese movement. Defensive fire. Mmm. Um, just, um, God, this is the pretty much is just down to close combat. Because next turn is going to be the American turn. We just have to move across. These guys have to be dead. It doesn't matter. Any other thing. Um, if they fail the morale check. He's just. He's got to fail it three times. It doesn't matter. There's no. There's actually no point firing in that location. There's. There's just none. Two, four, six, seven. Advance. So we have to double time the leader anyway. This DM is off. Actually, that DM, he could try to self-rally. I forgot to self-rally him. 10, no effect. He might rally next turn. One, two, three. Doesn't matter. These guys have to be eliminated. All right. So um, no defensive fire. Doesn't really matter. We, we have to keep our chances the maximum for the Americans. And um, we have one shot. And again, it'll be hand-to-hand -hand close combat. We don't need these Americans to survive because everybody else can get across. All right. So that's, that's it. That's all it comes down to, to be honest. So uh, close combat phase or, or uh, movement phase. Oh, it's a Japanese turn, so uh, nothing else happens because um, these guys advance down there. Oh, stop moved. Uh, that's close combat. We go straight to close combat phase. So the Japanese are uh, four, five, six, seven. Right? Do they need to eliminate both of them? I don't really think they need to. Does it matter? Does it really matter that they need to, did they really need to attack, to be honest with you? The Japanese attack is almost irrelevant. Um, so we have seven. 
It's only going to be a one-to-one -one against one squad anyway. Two, four, six, seven, eight. It doesn't really matter if we kill one or two. We just need to survive. Um, your shits and giggles, we'll go and get all of them. Uh, it's minus one for the leader, minus one for the first line unit. Uh, that puts it at one to two, minus two. We need an eight for casualty reduction. And we roll a 12, nothing happens. Uh, these units here, uh, again, hand to hand close combat. That's going to be a one to one. Need a six for elimination. We roll a nine. And that's pretty much the game. We couldn't kill them in close hand-to-hand -hand close combat. American turn six. We can't get across the bridge. And that's it. That's it, folks. Uh, these guys technically have to route. They'll probably just low crawl over this destination. Uh, nearest cover would be one, two, three, four. Any any of these jungle hexes would be the closest cover. He would rally them anyway in the beginning of the of the movement phase, theoretically. They both need eights. There's one for a three, and there's one for an eight. So both of these units actually would rally. Again, the strength of the Japanese leaders. Even though they got plastered, they would have rallied. But we didn't do anything in the close combat here. So as it points out, you know, you got a body block, body block the bridge. You got to throw bodies against it with the Americans. Um, interesting interesting development let me know what you guys think uh again these guys can't get across let's say this this guy's gonna rally up here for the americans it doesn't matter even if he rallies let's see he rallies six yeah of course he does he's american and no dm this is a two four they can't get on the bridge they can't get on the bridge they can't get on the bridge <clears throat> the only thing I could do, technically the only thing I could do is shoot in here and hope, and hope for 12s. That's the only thing I could do. So we're going to back these guys up. Uh, we're going to, we're going to, uh, we're just going to shoot the mortar. We're just going to shoot the mortar over here. Because that's the only thing we can do is just hope for casual reduction and hope for rate of fire. That's the only thing we have left. We need rate of fire and then um, a 20 chart. To just, if we KIA everything in there, we can clear it. Yeah, we can do that. This isn't over yet. So we rally this unit over here. Let's rally this unit over here. Not over yet, people. Don't quit. God damn it. Seven for the lead over here. This little son of a bitch rally doesn't really matter because that hex needs to be cleared. That, don't quit. If we KIA the son of a bitch because American firepower is so high, we can kill everything in there and then move um these two squads and the leader over and this 238 will make the difference holy shit this is close so we're going to fire the mortar over here anyway just uh just so that guy can't defensive fires guys go through there and it's not going to affect any any delay or any um cowering mortar fires over here he needs a six to hit rate of fire three let's go americans oh and we roll snake eyes Oh, shit. So that will be a 12. That'd just be a 12 chart. There's no terrain effect modifier. That's going to be a 12 firepower with rate of fire, of course. And we're going to have acquisition. Jesus. 12 firepower roll a 9. Not a big deal. Morale check. These guys can still break. Leader, 7. Squads need 8s. 4. Three, no problem. Fire again. Mortar. Boop, boop, boop. Twelve explodes. Well, goes from a crit to snakes. Uh, we had our chance. All right. Um, this unit's not going to fire. Uh, to take so he doesn't. The unit down here is not going to fire. He's just going to move away. Uh, he's going to move. Yep. Yeah, two assault move. It doesn't matter. Two four to get out of line of sight. So, um, but this, this unit, you know, this, this is the, this is the big one right here. This, the big shits and giggles. We need to vaporize these. I'm not sure if we can. So that is a 15, 14. That is a 24 chart. 
plus one. 24 plus one. Uh, we're going to get a one KIA. Uh, we need rate of fire. We need to roll 24 plus one. We need to roll three. All right, 24 plus one. They can, they can combine fire because this is dense jungle. This is not dead jungle. So that's okay. All right. 24 plus one. Oop, oh, rolled off the thing. Damn it. Come on. And we rolled an 11. Mm, so that's going to be anticlimactic. A normal morale check. Technically, they could roll all 12s. Uh, leader. He rolls a nine. He does pin. Uh, he actually, they don't pin. Um, that unit there rolls an eight, passes easily. This unit here says, go screw yourself, rolls the snake eyes. And the Americans in close combat, one morale check, rolls an eight, breaks. The other unit rolls a six, and he's fine. All right, so that's the final. Uh, 24, I could have rolled, if I had that snake eyes in that first shot, uh, those guys would have been vaporized. That'd be two, three, one KIA. Um, it could have been bad. And got rate of fire. Yeah, it could have, it could have been. I need a rate of fire. Anyway, that's how it goes. Uh, these units do nothing because they can't get past two, four. Nothing happens, and they block the road. Uh, the nine minus one stack. Uh, the whole game was just kind of flying around. So maybe you need to be more aggressive with the Americans. Uh, I think I was. Gotta be honest with you. I mean, flanking around here, you can't really jam them all in the front anyway. Flank around here, killed a couple units. It looked really bad for the Japanese. Um, we actually broke these units on the bottom. Looked even worse for the Japanese. And then we had a possible 24 chart that could absolutely vaporize everyone in this location. Um, not good enough. Simply not good enough. We had a nine minus one, eight minus one leader up in the front. He was gone the whole game. He might have made a difference. Um, slight, probably not too much, but uh, interesting, interesting game, gentlemen. Uh, this is the way I played it. Again, uh, I changed my strategy from setting those units up right here, up in the front. Instead, I jammed them all up here and blasted the shit out of him as he came in. Um, he did. The Americans did do an end around. Kind of got around me. I had a unit in the back for that criteria and then i just moved my units back um yeah um let me know what you think let me know uh some great you know disastrous moves that you thought i should not have made or maybe the japanese could have done better um they really didn't do great again i had one squad remaining and uh the americans had six one two three four five six this guy rallied I uh, actually he just broke at the end. So um so I had five squads plenty enough to get off. One guy was across the river. Um uh jumping to close combat didn't really make a difference. Nothing happened over there. Let me let me know what you guys think. I hope you enjoyed the game. Um write your thoughts down below. Let me know if you played this game and how your result ended. So this is a lengthy game and uh hopefully uh I'll be able to trim it down a little bit. But um, uh, onward and upwards to better things. We'll try the next scenario and see how that one works. Again, these have been CC fests. Lots of thick jungles, CC fests. I don't know if we're going to be in open ground next time, but when you got rivers blocking the movement and it really condenses the map, this is kind of an exciting game. I've got to be honest with you. Um, I thought it would be completely different. And uh, hopefully I played it correctly in terms of where I set up and all the special rules and things like that. Uh, sometimes you screw up, sometimes you don't. Thanks for watching, uh, and we'll catch you on the next game. Go play some ASL.